in our country to where like the fact that you are African American may grant you a job. Like the fact that someone mm-hmm. would think that someone would claim to be African American to gain um, employment is just insane. And the fact that that's just like that's normal. You know, you have um, how certain minority groups are able to, or I mean, not even really minorities, but like minority groups are able to gain access to schools or employment over someone who is equally qualified is ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's called yeah. affirmative action, and I, I have to do agree. I think human beings should be looked at as individuals, and thank you, Zach, for the call tonight, uh, based on you know their actions and their choices. And in this case, I think the choices of these police and these bureaucrats demanding these young girls get permits and jump through government hoops is absolutely outrageous. But maybe you think you should be protected from this illegal lemonade. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Usually, the older one gets, the less you are able to absorb amino acids and the less you are able to repair the 100 trillion cells of your body. As a result, you'll have less energy, your tissues will shrink, and you'll become wrinkled. An older person will typically injure more easily and heal more slowly. Not fun. However, if you can consume a protein powder that is easier to absorb, then you may be able to gain back some strength, muscle, and speed of recovery. One World Whey is a highly digestible whey protein powder that may be the perfect answer for you. My name is Errol. I'm 74 years old. You know, the taste of One World Whey is amazing. I play pickleball, and since taking One World Whey and your trace mineral supplement, I have more energy and recover faster from my working out. I used to take another grass-fed whey protein powder, but now I'm getting much better results using One World Whey. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and and learn how we can help you get out of debt. 800-981-7590. If you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. 
You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You, of course, are invited to join us here on the live Saturday edition of the program. And Spend Bitcoins is for sale. Maybe you've been there. Spendbitcoins.com slash sale is the where you can go to actually place your bid in this public auction. Uh, over 10,000 Bitcoin accepting merchants are listed on the site. It's one of the oldest and largest Bitcoin merchant directories. And it can be yours if you get the winning bid, so go to spendbitcoins.com slash sale. By the way, when you search on Google for where can I spend bitcoins, spendbitcoins.com is the number one search result. Uh, so whether you want to sell bitcoins on the site, sell ads, sell premium listings, the world is your oyster with spend bitcoins. So go to spendbitcoins.com slash sale and you can place your bid there. And I know that a few days ago when we were last on, Mark, was uh, Wednesday night. There were a few days left in this auction, so I imagine it's going to be wrapping up here, I don't know if it's tonight or tomorrow night, but I bet it's coming very, very soon. I don't have the actual bidding page pulled up. Oh, sorry about that. Your mic's muted. Go All ahead. I can tell you, tell you is it says one day left. Whoa, so it's okay. uh, basically over here. They've uh, The auction's got it at 4100 right now. That's it? So yeah. it hasn't gone up at all in like three days. I wonder uh, if it's going to start shooting up at the end or if somebody's going to get a deal on you this. Ne you never know. I mean, this is basically a business out yeah. of the box. Right. And it's a business that is going to... It's I mean, relevant out of the box. Right. Yeah. You have to believe that Bitcoins are going to be um, you know, relevant and important in the future. And I can tell you that many banking organizations believe that. And many many government regulata regulatory agencies believe that. And some of the smartest people I've ever met believe it. So I tend to believe that's the case. That's why I think it's a big deal to be able to get this uh, this URL. You know, Spendbitcoins.com slash sale. We were talking about this lemonade stand. Yet another one has been cracked down upon by police. This time it's Texas in a town called Overton, Texas. We'll continue with the story here. But first, Mac is in uh, Washington State in Tacoma. Hello, Mac. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey there. Uh, just um, last night, a uh, caller called in and said something about uh, pet licensing, uh, dog licensing and stuff like that. And uh, it, it sort of uh, tangentially is related to what I'm going to talk about. My aunt, I'm, I'm from Florida. My whole family's from Florida. They've been there for generations. Mm -hmm. uh, she moved from one part of Florida to another part of Florida and discovered that she had to um, register and license her pets with the county. Or else they so will kidnap good, your cats or your, they'll pet nap your cat, pets. pets. Right, pets. exactly. <laughs> and being a good citizen, she went down there and uh, registered her two dogs, uh, one of which was quite old. Mm. Well, in the in the following year, uh, the old dog died. Yep. They buried it in the backyard, as a lot of people do. I've done that all my life with my dead animals. Well, in Florida, you can uh, dig a hole. Um, you know, up here in the Northeast, uh, the the you stick a shovel in the ground and you hit a rock. But uh, in Florida, you can't <laughs> dig too deep. You'll hit water in a lot of parts of it. I can tell you, I've dug pretty big yeah. holes for huh. my mom's Dobermans um, when we buried them. Wow. So, I mean, you don't want to. You right. don't want some animal coming along and digging them up. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, and these are special, yeah, well, special friends, special I've, family. I've dug 12 inches down and gotten water in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. true. Well, anyway, well, well, go um, ahead, Mac. So, so she, dog died. Uh, she, you're right, dog died. She goes down the next year to pay the other license fee, and I think it was something what they would probably describe as a nominal fee, like 10 bucks or 15 bucks or something yep. like that. So she pays for the, the dog that's currently alive. And goes back home thinking everything's good. Well, a few days later, she gets a letter in the mail saying, hey, look, you're trying to scam us here. The, you, mm -hmm. you have two pets and you only paid for one. We, you need to send in that money. Uh, and so she wrote a letter back saying, look, uh, you know, the other dog died. This was in the days of letters, you know, not email. Um, she said that dog died. And uh, they sent another letter back uh, with an even more haughty tone saying, Look, we, you know, we we know that this dog's alive and that you're trying to scam us. And if you don't pay by X date, we're going to double the fine or whatever it was, you know. The the and so she she just called him up and said, "Well, listen, this this dog's dead. I don't know what you people want." Oh, we hear that all the time, lady. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, they said, "Well, you need to get a letter from uh, your." You've got to be kidding me. Saying that the, wow. saying that the dog is dead. 
And she goes, well, the dog died at home, and we buried it in the backyard. <laughs> and, I mean, this has been years and years. I can't I'm afraid you're just going to have to spend – you're going you're to have up. to pay for it for the rest of your life then. <laughs> <laughs> you don't Dig have a piece well, of paper from the vet? Sorry. Right. Well, finally, the, the conversation ended with her – uh, saying, "Look, come on down to my house and dig the dog up, and and then then you'll know that the dog is dead." And phone, you know, somebody slammed the phone down first. I'm not sure if it was she or them, <laughs> but she never heard from him again. So, oh, that, that, good for that, her. That's my dog license thing. Well, you know, they do. They're going to have to prove their case, right? And and so they're hoping they can just muscle their way into getting people to pay up, and ultimately mm -hmm. it works because nobody wants to have their dog dog napped. Uh, by the state and sure. then taken to some... Or dug up, for that matter. Yeah. I but, mean, who would want that? Well, right? yeah, and so in order to prove that the dog's still alive, they're going to have to prove the dog's still alive, which is going to be right. relatively difficult for them to do. They can't go into court and say, uh, Judge, look, you know, they had this dog last year, and now they haven't paid. So obviously it's still alive, and they're hiding it. You know, that's not that's mm -hmm. not evidence. That's just speculation. They have no case, and so that's why they didn't press uh, press forward. Yeah, so um, when I got a letter about my dog um, and it's uh, licensure, in New Hampshire. yeah, here okay. in New Hampshire, um, I asked them first uh, to first they're going to have to prove it's a dog because they don't you don't have to license any other animal in the state of New Hampshire, and so you know I'm gonna you're gonna need to get a DNA test on this animal because mm. I'll claim go I'll go ahead and claim it's an animal, but if you want to give me a if you want me to force force me into a dog license you're going to have to prove to me that this is a dog. What's the legal definition of dog anyway? I don't know, but yeah. uh, that's their problem, it's not mine. Uh secondarily, well, you it need will be your problem if they charge you criminally. Yeah. You need to prove that that animal uh, lives at a particular location. Um uh, you know, like that's true. It yeah. has to be within their jurisdiction. They have to prove it's your dog. What does that mean? You had a cat at one time that was just kind of coming around the house and you were feeding it, right? Uh, the cat would come inside the house sometimes to acquire some food. Is that your cat? Is it your cat simply because you fed the cat? Right. And, and you know, I mean, you're going to have to prove ownership. That's yeah. an extra. You know, there's all kinds of things. These dog licenses are very tenuous. I would say so. But most people won't challenge them. So they're never really. There's probably very few court cases out there of people who have actually stood their ground on this matter like that. Yep, you're going to have to first show me it's a dog. Most people are willing to pay the right. four bucks. Well, That's why it's such a low fee, right? Because it's such a low fee that most people are willing to pay it. Do I have to license the, the uh, grasshoppers in my yard? Don't I mean, give I've got, them any ideas. I have 11 pigs. Do I have to license them too? Probably in some places, Mark. I would imagine you do. Mac, anything else you want to share yeah. tonight? Good story. Thank you. Um, ju just the uh, that I'm from a pretty rural part of Florida. In fact, no strike that a very rural part of Florida. And um, we, when we were kids, there was about four or five dogs that used to hang out with us. And as far as we knew, they didn't belong to anybody. Mm -hmm. We'd beat them once in a while. I don't know where they slept. I guess they slept in my yard once in a while. But you know, out there in the country, that's that's just how it is. There's these dogs. They'd hang out with us all day. We'd play guns and we'd play trucks and we'd play whatever. And there, there's these dogs kind of palling around with us, and then at night they'd, they'd go to wherever it wherever was. Wherever they go. Down at night. Mac, thanks yeah. for your story tonight. Appreciate it. Toll free number here, 855 450 free. Have you ever stood up to a dog licensing fee? You know, because I love the idea of what you're saying here, Mark, is that. Go ahead. Prove that I have this dog. Prove I never got a letter back from him. I told yeah. him, you know, you're first you're going to have to prove it's a dog. Second, you're going to have to prove it's, uh, you know, mine. And third, you're going to have to prove it lives at this house. Really, if they didn't uh, if they didn't have the veterinarians working for them and reporting everybody who gets a rabies shot to the state, that's how it do it's done here in New Hampshire, they wouldn't know half the dogs that are out there, I bet. It's Free Talk Live. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771 is activating on a mass scale now due to the vaccines and iron poisoning all symptoms disease and deaths are due to measles and iron not just rash and flu-like symptoms as the officials claim measles requires a host with iron to replicate iron intake is at an unprecedented level deaths and hospitalizations are set to soar now in 2015 this is the extermination plan people for further information go to unveilingthem.com u-n-v-e-i-l-i-n-g them.com unveilingthem.com 
Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. Or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you may join us here on this live Saturday edition. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. A couple topics on the table, but of course you can bring up anything that you want. Dog licensing. Have you ever challenged uh, the, the claim that you need to get a dog license? Can the government prove that you actually own that dog, that it is actually a dog, right? These are some of the points you made in the last segment, Mark. How many people have actually gone through with this? How many people have actually gone to court to defend their right to own whatever animal they want to, or in this in this case, force them to prove that you own the animal they're alleging that you do, uh, but you know, to sort of stand up for your rights on this matter? I don't know anybody who's ever done it. And now you threatened to do it, right? Like you were willing to do it, but they backed down? They just didn't. They sent me a letter, and I sent them a response asking, you know, how do you know that this dog is mine? Because I have taken animals to the vet before that are not my animals. Um, I also said, you know, how do you know it's a dog? How do you know it lives at this at this address? Um, because and they, they said, whoa, this guy is too much trouble. He's more trouble than he's worth. Throw that in the circular file. Right. I could right? own a dog that doesn't live in my town. Right. I mean, isn't that possible? If, I suppose. Would yeah, I be sure required could. to have a license for an animal that has never resided inside the? Of course the, not. I wouldn't right? think so. So that that's ludicrous. Um, and also, the, of course, you know, in a court of law, you have to prove every point of law. Right. A dog license is only applicable to dogs. It's not applicable to other points of uh, other 
They would have to take you to likely criminal court in that yep. case. And so they're going to have to prove it's a dog. I don't know how they would do that, and it's not really my business. Maybe they get an expert opinion from a veterinarian, but I can assure you they'll spend far more than the 10 bucks yeah, or whatever think, it is for a dog license in hassling me over it. I don't think they would have the ability to kidnap the dog prior to the trial. I think they would have to get the court's order. I don't know that they have the ability to kidnap to do the that. dog anyway. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah. Absolutely, they do. If you do not get a dog license, they can confiscate that dog. Seems uh, to me they could just lien the property. Let's go to Peter. No, no, they absolutely can confiscate it. Uh, Peter in Columbia, South Carolina, listening to WQXL. Hey, Peter. Yeah, well, that's kind of what happened to me. I had a dog that passed. I had two others. I'm sure they checked vet records or whatever, and I had actually always paid the fee. And uh, they, I said the dog was dead. They didn't believe me. I said, well, you want to get an affidavit from my vet who knew that the dog was dead. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so they said essentially it was that they were going to come take, they were going to come take any dog they found on the property. So wow. I said, you know what? I said, you know what? Um, you know, you guys bring it on because you don't have an easement on my property because I'm a dog. And uh, even if it's a crime, it's not a felony. So you don't have probable cause for any of your officers to actually come onto my property when they see a dog, even if it fits the description or whatever. So uh, they sent me essentially what was like a fine notice for municipal court. So when I filed a temporary restraining order, as well as counterclaims against them, um, I think I got their attention. So the city attorney gets on the line with me, and we had a little powwow with one of the local judges. Um, and he didn't know that I was a partner at a law firm uh, when we started. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounded like you knew your stuff and, pretty good there. Go ahead. Well, and when the and when the when the judge started out with uh, my last name's not Smith, but when he started out with Attorney Smith, what are we doing here today? Um, the other the other guy who who probably been out of law school about ten seconds perked up real fast, and I actually did require. Now I don't know what the uh, tort claims issues or whatever with the city versus you know a state having autonomy, but I did actually request and get one dollar. And so my dad taught me a long time ago. Uh, if it's if it's an issue and you just say, hey, don't worry about it, you know, it's going to come up again and again and again. But if you take at least something, even if it's one dollar, you know, and I and I didn't mind paying the prior fees. I didn't I didn't challenge the validity sort of like you were talking about. But uh, I actually don't get notices anymore, even though I still got a couple of dogs and I'd pay them if I got them. Yeah. I mean, I. Five bucks. I get that, uh, you know, I have no problem with people choosing to pay the dog license fee and that kind of thing. For me, it's just like, eh, I just don't know where they get where they get off saying you must have a license to have this particular type of animal. So, you know, and I'm cantankerous. They can come after me. Peter, It'll be thanks, fun. thanks for your call, yeah, man. I appreciate I, uh, he hearing from you today. All right, thanks, yeah. Yep. Thanks. Toll free number here is a fifty five four fifty free. Sounds to me like Peter's the lawyer I'm going to call with the dog licensing problems. Probably not <laughs> because he's in South Carolina Just and kidding, North, yeah. New Hampshire. Uh, have you or someone you know been a victim of electronic pickpocketing? If not, you might be wondering what it is. Well, it's when a thief can pass near you with a scanner and then use that scanner to read the data on RFID chips that may be in your credit and debit cards. They can then use that information to charge your cards uh, for their purchases and possibly even compromise your identity. And thanks to ID Stronghold, there's an easy way to prevent electronic pickpocketing from happening to you. I've got an ID Stronghold wallet, and I believe— In your pocket right now. Yep, and I believe uh, your wife, Laura, also has That's right. uh, one as well. She uh, doesn't actually let me carry uh, credit cards. Ever since she got this thing, you mean? Well, I, I get ever. to carry a credit card, but not one with the with an RFID chip in it. ID Stronghold has been making these products that can block electronic pickpocketing since 2005, and some of their most loyal customers are military personnel. They place a high value on personal security, and now you can also have that same protection in the form of great leather RFID blocking wallets made by ID Stronghold. All you need to do is just switch your wallet for a quality leather wallet from ID Stronghold with built-in protection against electronic pickpocketing. Visit IDStronghold.com to see their huge selection of his and hers wallets. That's IDStronghold.com and tell them Ian Freeman sent you. So to continue the story here about the, uh, the girls with the lemonade, in case you're just tuning in, uh, Andrea Green and her sister Zoe, they're aged 8 and 7, Wanted to raise some money, about $105, to get some tickets to a Texas water park, Splash Kingdom. To take their dad for Father's Day. Yep, they were selling lemonade for 50 cents and kettle corn for $1, which means, you know, they'd have to sell quite a few cups of lemonade and a lot of kettle corn. Yeah, they were planning ahead. Make 105 bucks. Unfortunately, the police showed up about an hour after the girls opened up on their own street. The police chief uh, told Yahoo Parenting that the officer who responded... And I don't know if that uh, they are responding to a complaint call 
or if they're just responding because they happen to drive by and see some illegal activity. Either way, it's disturbing that the police are doing this kind of stuff. And they're not just doing it in Texas. We hear stories about this from all all over over. the place. It's just been a little while, so I'm, I'm glad it's been a while since we've actually heard one of these things. The police chief told Yahoo Parenting the officer told them they had to go to City Hall and get a permit, where then the city told them uh, the city people told them they had to check with the health department, which they didn't do. And Sandy Evans, their mom, says that sending them to the health department was too much. She says they're just trying to make money for their own cause. That's ridiculous. Evans did not respond to Yahoo uh, Parenting's request for comment. On Facebook, Evans wrote that she was feeling defeated, quote, The police department was very nice to us and provided us with the correct paperwork to get a, quote, believe this or not, lemonade selling permit. Oh, jeez. I can't believe it's $150 for this thing. I mean, mean, so to get a lemonade selling permit, you need to... To, you need to go in at 150 bucks. That means you got to sell a lot of lemonade, you know? To- well, again, the officer is worried uh, that the bacteria could grow in lemonade. Yes, but their piece of paper doesn't stop that from happening. It's not like they're going to come out and actually test it. It's a magic it. spell, Mark. They read the right. words on the piece of paper... And it creates a force field around the lemonade that prevents all bacteria from being grown. There is a magic spell here. The magic spell is somehow that the state solves problems and that people, there are people listening right now that believe this. I am going to dispel it for you. This permit doesn't fix anything. This permit has nothing to do with making all of us safer. Oh, yes, it does. It, it solves the problem of disobedient little girls going around and just thinking right. they can sell lemonade well, it all willy-nilly. The, it solves the problem of people having an American dream, believing yeah. that you were born free. Uh, so let's see. She says, this is unreal. It's, it's just that. lemonade. I almost feel slapped in the face as a return for the effort that my family puts into our community. Instead of pursuing the permit, the girls will set up a newsstand this Saturday, according to KLTV. It will be free lemonade, and donations are welcome. So actually, you know what, Mark? We need to look into a follow-up on this particular story. It being Saturday today. Maybe there's another story in the news about these girls being threatened for accepting donations without a permit now. Free lemonade's a good idea, and then uh, people give donations, then you're not actually selling it. I think that that's a uh, It may a be a good, good workaround. I mean, maybe they actually but research this. People will pay more. Uh, I've, I've bought lemonade from little girls, and if they're or little boys or whatever. I bet you're right. And if, yeah. if, I, if there's change involved, I just leave it for them. Right. So people will probably give them a dollar, and then they'll, they'll probably make it to their goal even faster now. Uh, but we'll find out. Uh, you can share your thoughts here. Maybe you think that lemonade stands should be cracked down upon. Maybe you're the kind of person who would call the cops on these girls. Call us. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime. Anytime. Is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of gold bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting. You said it, ladies. Stay cool with gold bond powder spray. Stay cool with gold bond. (laughs) Ha ha. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. 
Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and it turns out there is an update on the Lemonade story. Again, the two girls, uh, seven and eight years old, have been threatened by the police in Texas for illegal lemonade sales. And they did not ultimately get the permit. Uh, the city bureaucrats wanted them to go to the health department, and the mom just said, that's it, I'm, I've gone far enough. She had gone down after the police chief told her that you know her daughters are going to get in trouble if they don't get the permit. The police chief claimed that he could waive the $150 fee, which just shows that the hell does he know? He doesn't even know what he's talking about. He sent them to the city building or wherever, and then the city people sent them to the health department. So the bureaucrat, the police chief, didn't even send them to the right department. So how does he know that he can even get the fee waived in the first place? Uh, so there is an update on that story. We'll get to that here in moments. It's Ian and Mark in the studio with you here live Saturday night. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're also talking about dog licensing, and Michael is on the line in Huntsville. Michael, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah, I was, I've had two dogs, and one of them was Sparky. Had him when we lived in Detroit. And then I uh, had uh, Scotty when we lived in Nashville, Tennessee. I had never seen a dog license in my life. Never we put, we put uh, you know tags on the collar that were the dog's name, the address, you know phone number, call something like that. Right. I had never I had never seen no uh, no dog licenses or anything like that. But see, I, I, I way Daddy would do it. We see we're both American Indian people. We consider this country to be ours, no matter what the government says. And we're not going to let any non-Indians tell us what we can or cannot do. On our land. That's Would you get a license at. if an Indian told you to get a? Get a <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he, he, if I'm on the reservation, you know, but I ain't, you know, I'm out here. And so no, you would no if Indian you were on the reservation. So it's here. not an anti-authority well, thing no, on they, your part. They wouldn't, be that, they wouldn't be that stupid anyway. Okay. That's probably uh, true. Uh, uh, that, but that's why, I mean, you know, uh, and of course, even out here, you know, the, the, the regular public uh, cop, even if he's an Indian. He ain't going to be that kind of a moron. Thanks, like Michael, that. for your we call tonight. To Toll-free number is uh, 855-450-FREE. You can bring up whatever you want. Robert in Clinton, South Carolina, listening via TuneIn. Robert, you're on with Ian and Mark on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian and Mark. I don't know how old you all are, but I'm going to give you two words 
why or to uh, or a description of why you got to regulate kids. It's called E. coli. We have an outbreak in Greenwood, South Carolina, resulting in the death of a child because adults did not supervise children in hand washing and otherwise. So what should have happened in this case with the little kids is that the parents should have monitored it. Yeah. Are you serious? Online. I mean, are you seriously saying that little girls should get a lemonade permit because you're afraid of E. coli? How about you just don't buy the damn lemonade? How about the kids don't touch the food? Kids are nasty. Well, and you're from a generation that doesn't like rules. You're from the Gen X, you know. He's, you from, heard of time he's millennial. He's it millennial. Depends. And it I'm depends, Gen X. Mark. I, I, you you and, could and, argue I'm either. You know, you, 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 need a, you need a baby boomer smack. Okay. The head. Well, look, only a baby boomer, only the entitled generation could be so presumptuous as to believe somehow some piece of paper is going to fix the problem of E. coli. <laughs> They're not washing their hands with the paper, anything. sir. You didn't. Let me tell you something. You can I tell me whatever you feel like, you man. That boot history, taste. That's what I want to know. You haven't paid for anything in your entire life. I've and never paid for anything in my entire paid. life. Everything I've you've got, I've paid, paid for. for you've you've licked a boot for dues. everything you've got. <laughs> you haven't paid your dues. I have paid. I spent eight and a half years in prison and then worked my way up to here. You can kiss my butt after you get finished licking that cop's boot. Well, let me tell you something. We boomers fail with y'all. We started getting dirty hippies, and we started failing, and we started teaching you all rules are bad. Well, I was raised by the greatest generation that ever was, and they grandma made me wash my hands. You better believe my grandmother made me ridiculous. wash my hands, too. Oh, my this is the but most she didn't. All right, I'm My grandmother was a Reagan Republican, and she never believed for a second that some government piece of paper somehow fixes problems. This is the most ridiculous conversation I've heard in recent memory. Uh, this guy, Robert, is claiming to speak for all of the baby boomer generation and acting as though everybody's the same and as though the millennials and the Gen Xers are all the same. It's the most silly, absurd collectivizing I've ever heard. Go ahead, Robert. Well, anyway, you cut me off, but basically... No, I didn't. I put you on hold. You're still here, so you can blather about your ridiculous collectivizing. Go ahead. Fine. The fact is, hear me now and believe me later. I lived through polio epidemic. I lived through measles epidemic. I drove and worked for a school district. <laughs> Kids are living Petri dishes. All right, thanks for the oh, call. They're dirty. There's no doubt about it. There's going to be an epidemic caused by some girls with their lemonade stand. Oh. We need the police to step in. I don't. I couldn't. I can't believe we actually got that call. Well, I didn't really think we'd ever get that call. Okay, hold on just a second. The fact is, is that some parents. Um, and the way they raise their kids yeah. do result in communicable diseases spreading. Don't buy the damn lemonade if you're worried about it. But this government piece of paper doesn't fix it. Can right. somebody understand this? This is really important, Ian, is that we understand that the government's just going to take your money, give you a piece of paper. I just got a burn permit to burn some stuff on my property mm -hmm. uh, last Friday, and I can assure you that that burn permit doesn't put <laughs> fires out. I mean, the only purpose of it in that circumstance is that the fire department knows, hey, there's a fire going on here. Well, Somebody reports it. I mean, but there, it, the, the argument there, Mark, would be that at least with the permit, in theory, the firemen are coming out and inspecting your fire pit to make sure that there's no uh, tree branches. They're not within. doing that in this circumstance. That's what I mean. This is, I think, this is a little different. So it's while your comparison, I think, jives in some ways, it, others is not really applicable here. This the, is a way the for the government not, to get 150 yeah, bucks out of people. The, right. The police chief is not going to come and test bacteria. Test for bacteria. Okay, that's just not going to happen. The health department is not going to come out there and test for bacteria in these little girls' lemonade cups. And if they did, that would be even more ridiculous. If you are so worried about children, and look, I'm not a fan of kids. I don't have any. Uh, but, you know, if you're so worried about but I bought lemonade from a kid on the side of the road. There was one here in the neighborhood, actually. When I heard that some neighborhood kid was selling lemonade, I went over and bought the damn lemonade. You know, I didn't really care whether it was good or not. I didn't really care whether, you know, how the, what the conditions were under which it was made. 
I'm just not, I guess I'm just not worried about that kind of stuff. And why should I live in the world where I'm always wondering whether those little kids have gotten their government health permit? I mean, that's sick. You know, I wonder how old I have to be in order to stop listening to a-holes that say, you don't get to have an opinion because you're not old enough. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I am 44 years old. Jesus Christ died for your sins at 33. Thomas Jefferson wrote the, the Declaration of Independence at 33. We've had, I mean, for, I'm old enough to be elected president for god's sake well, i believe he, i'm older than kennedy was when he was elected and did you hear i the, mean at some point yeah. some old geezer and this guy's not even old enough to be considered an old geezer like he's a geezer well before his time well did you hear him intimate that you would understand someday you know someday you'll understand right uh, well at that point my seven-year-old <laughs> will be grown up and no longer have to worry about cops bothering him with his lemonade well stand. thankfully we've never heard of that happening in new hampshire no Okay, so I don't know if that would happen up here, but in Texas, it's happened. In fact, there's an update on the story. We'll get to that here. Eric is with us listening in Birmingham. Eric, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello? Hey, you're on the air. Hey, first, I'm a baby member, too, and I want to apologize for that that, that jerk. It was ridiculous. I shouldn't have <laughs> lashed out at him like I did, but good Lord. No, no, no. You uh, you got to defend yourself. You just can't let people walk all over you. Like Rand Paul, He, you know, when he jumped at that lady, then he— then he kissed uh, Wolf Blitzer's butt. Oh, I'm sorry. And he said, no. You, you talk to a jerk, you don't take crap. And that, you, you're right. I, I bought the whole thing he used to buy. And it's crap. They were, you know, the, the World War II generation was wrong about Vietnam. They were wrong about Afghanistan. They were mm. wrong about Iran. We need to stay the hell out of this. But here's my question. <laughs> Let me calm down. Can't this <laughs> sheriff or a judge step in and say, look, leave these people alone? Mm, I can't think. I mean, that's my, no. My, that would be my advice to the parents. Sure. I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I, I know that I guess in some places the sheriff is the highest law enforcement officer in the Oh, in that's county, the truth. But oh, I man. don't know if that's true everywhere. I believe that's the case well, everywhere. I think so. Don't realize. Here's, 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 the most important vote you ever cast is for your county sheriff. People need to realize it. I think that's a rumor in in some cases. I don't know if there's actually any – I don't know how true that claim is. I think that's sort of like a, a patriot myth, uh, if you will. Well, I, it's Thank one you. I believed – yeah. Hey, Eric, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Well, it's certainly true that the uh, sheriff could probably arrest the police. What makes you believe otherwise? I've just heard that, that it's uh Oh, so you've heard something contrary. Well, right. Uh, we're all just going on what we've heard. You don't have any evidence that the sheriff is actually able to control the police chiefs or sheriff whatever. Sheriff John Mack claims it. Je John Mack? Is that it? No. I'd have to look. Sheriff Mack? Some, Richard, I think. Is his name. Yeah, 855 Sher Look up Sheriff Mack. It may be true in Wyoming or wherever the hell he's from. If it's you free talk sheriff, live. I We're can. coming up. The Atlas Society's Atlas Summit is just around the corner, June 18th through the 21st, right before Porkfest in Nashua, New Hampshire. Connect, grow, have fun with longtime objectivists and people just learning Ayn Rand's philosophy. There are discounts for students, locals, and one-day rates at atlassociety.org. The event is jam-packed with speakers. Come and be a part of the most important objectivist event of the year, the Atlas Summit, June 18th through the 21st, Nashua, New Hampshire, atlassociety.org. 20% off with coupon code FTL, atlassociety.org. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, June 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.96 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports recent concerns about sites from antiquity being damaged in war have mostly centered around the Islamic State occupations in Syria. But attention quickly turned south yesterday with the news that the World Heritage Site in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a was the target of multiple airstrikes. UNESCO Director General Arana Bakova yesterday said she was profoundly distressed by the news that one of the oldest urban landscapes in the region came under fire from Saudi warplanes and locals reported at least five civilians who lived in the area around the ancient neighborhood were killed. Sana'a's old city dates back to 2,500 years and is home to one of the oldest surviving mosques in the world. The extent of the damage is unclear, but several locals have released images showing some of the ancient buildings reduced to rubble in the wake of the strike. The extension of damage will likely continue to grow in the weeks and months to come as most of the buildings in this ancient neighborhood were cemented together and the fall of some is putting new pressure on the foundations of others causing cracks across the area. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports nearly 1 in 10 men in the United States experience some form of depression or anxiety. However, less than half of them get treatment, according to a new study. Among men who experience either depression or anxiety, black and Hispanic men were less likely than white men to either report mental health concerns or treat them if they did report them, according to a new study from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Stephen Blumberg, an associate director for science at the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics, told Health we suspect that there are several social and cultural pressures that lead black and Hispanic men to be less likely than white men to seek mental health treatments. He said that these pressures, which include ideas about masculinity and the stigma of mental illness, may be more pronounced in men of color, and these same forces may lead men of color to be more likely to deny or hide feelings of anxiety or depression. Researchers at the National Center for Health Statistics reviewed data collected in a poll of 21,000 men, finding that 8.5% had daily feelings of depression or anxiety, yet only 41% of these men took medication or sought treatment for the condition. Among men aged 18 to 44, black and Hispanic men were 30% less likely to experience depression or anxiety. However, they were 7% less likely to seek treatment than non-Hispanic white men who experienced either one. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
Reuters reports federal prosecutors on Friday petitioned a judge to keep secret their evidence in the case against former U.S. House Speaker Dennis Hastert, who pled not guilty on Tuesday to charges of trying to hide cash transactions and lying to the FBI about it. Hastert had allegedly paid close to $2 million to an individual to conceal past misconduct, which was reportedly sexual contact with a male student while he was a teacher and coach in the 1960s and 70s. In a motion filed before Judge Thomas Durkin, who is hearing the Hastert case, prosecutors said sensitive information in the case should not be disseminated because it would adversely affect the privacy interest of third parties, and also said that Hastert's defense attorney does not oppose the motion. Prosecutors asked the judge to restrict distribution of material in the case to key defense personnel and witnesses, and asked that copies not be made without the court's permission. They also asked to submit under a court seal certain materials that they said were sensitive. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A report published this week found that a growing number of Americans are being forced to make ends meet by collaborating on songs with Miami-based rapper Pitbull. Citing rising income inequality and a turbulent job market, the report found many U.S. citizens moonlighting as recording artists, mixing drum beats, and guest starring on tracks for the Latin American producer. It's exhausting between being part of Pitbull's entourage anytime he's on a club tour and mixing new hooks for him every few nights. I barely see my wife anymore. It's not like I want to do another remix with Avicii, but we really need the money. Okay, sh uh, sure. I need to get back to work. In a groundbreaking find, paleontologists this week unearthed the earliest known dinosaur stickers on record. Reportedly discovered in a box labeled Greg's Room, the excavated remains of the reptile adhesives include such stunning specimens as a triceratops featuring the words Dino's Rock, an Apatosaurus sticker, and the extremely rare Puffy Kai. This is the Onion News Network. We're back with more Free Talk Live on the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, we'll take your calls about anything. Coming up, we will update you on the girls who were threatened by the police in Texas. They're age 7 and 8, Zoe and Andrea, threatened for running a lemonade stand without a government permission slip because if they don't get their government permission slip, then bacteria might grow in the lemonade. That's what the police chief said. Uh, well, I'm paraphrasing, but that was his excuse. He claimed that, uh, you know, they need to get this permit because bacteria, as though the permit's somehow going to make sure that the girls use proper food handling techniques, that the permit will somehow ensure that the parents know a, a word one about, you know, proper food handling techniques and that they will assist and observe and handhold the entire time. The vast majority of uh, food poisoning that goes on in the United States goes on from facilities that are inspected by the USDA or restaurants that are inspected by restaurant inspectors. Really? I had heard that it was the majority of it happens at home. Where does the food that you get from home generally come from? Facilities mm. that are inspected by the USDA. Okay. So I pr I process pork. Yeah. And I choose to process it, you know, what they call custom, which is non-USDA. Um, but I have gone through USDA facilities uh, in, in the processing of pork, and, you know, I can see what's done and what's not done. So it's like, eh, you know, mm. I, I, everything's fine here. But... Um, this is what people are choosing to do. There's far fewer than 1% of the food purchased in this country does not go through a USDA facility. Yeah, so therefore, I, go ahead. No, I, I thought it had to do with poor handling techniques, uh, does, a lot of the right, food poisoning. Poor handling techniques occur in USDA inspected facilities. No, 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 no but I mean in your kitchen, like where you know you grab the chicken, but then you you know accidentally don't wash your hands or something before you touch something with a raw chicken on it. You know, that's that has nothing to do with the USDA. That has nothing to do with the facility that processed the chicken. That's a failure of somebody to know proper food handling techniques. That's what I understood that most food poisoning came from. You're saying that's not the case? The statement that I made still stands. What was the statement? The statement that I made is that most, the vast majority of the, the, the uh, you know, food illness that we have in this food country illness. is caused by, A, products that come from USDA mm -hmm. inspected facilities facilities and B products uh, you know restaurants that have been inspected by government mm. restaurant inspectors. Okay. So we That's not a real fair statement though, is it? I mean if you're saying that 
The food illness has come from a product that was inspected by the USDA. Well, the USDA obviously isn't inspecting the kitchens uh, of the homes that that food is being prepared in. I, I don't uh, think that the USDA is responsible for if you decide to lay a raw chicken in, um, you no, know, say your do chili. I think that. Um, I don't think that either. But, I mean, I, what the point I'm trying to make, and I think that it's really, really important, it's prescient here, is that... P government pieces of paper don't fix problems. That much is true. Let's go to Barb. She's in, I don't know how you pronounce this, Barb. Is it Rives Junction, Michigan? Rives Junction. Rives. Okay, I should have I should have known it wouldn't have been Rives. Go However ahead. you guessed. <laughs> You're on By the, the air. way, I've been a nurse, registered nurse, 22 years, did a lot of uh, infection control surveillance. And I kind of agree with the one point about the U.S. government, like with the listeria and the fruit, and then um, the tankers, you know, with the eggs, the milk, whatever, and now we date our eggs, we date our milk, and we used to not do that. And it does seem like the more the government's involved, the more problems we have. Hmm. Washing your hands is essential. But, you know, we have MRSA on our own skin, methyl-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. But a lot of times you go in the hospital, you have a surgery, you get it. Yeah. We already have it. Really? It just gets transported a different way. Everybody, if you cultured everybody in the United States, probably 90-some percent of the people already have it. Wow. They told, In the 80s, they told me it'd be an epidemic. And uh, there's so many germs that people don't even know about. So good hand washing is always going to be very important. But how long you cook your food, where you eat your food from, what you eat your food off of, you know, um, how it's prepared is the biggest thing. So let me ask so, you this about I, I MERS, think, though. I, I, I've heard what you've said, but I thought that it was just sort of existent on your skin. Wait, are we talking about MERS or MRSA? MRSA. I'm sorry, MRSA. MRSA. Um, MERS is a different thing. Yeah. Um, don't you have to have, uh, uh, I mean, isn't it, doesn't it have to get into your body in order to be deadly? Well, if you culture your nares or under your arms, then you would know if you had it or not. So you have a surgery, say, and that's a lot of times when people get it. When they have something open, then it does get into their body, so yeah. you are correct. Okay. You guys are hilarious. This is the first time I've listened to you. It's like Howard Stern without Howard Stern. It's like Bob and Tom. I'm <laughs> loving it. Thank you. I oh. am loving it. Thanks, Barb. I, I appreciate so I'm that. Enjoy you guys. Are you a listening out of our Jackson uh, affiliate to BKHM? Yes, I am. Excellent. Welcome aboard. We're on there uh, every Saturday night, so uh, don't hesitate to call us again in the future. And Oh, before you go, as a nurse, as somebody who knows a thing or two about uh, being clean in the kitchen, uh, would you would you buy from uh, lemonade from these little girls, even if they didn't have a permit? Lemon is one of the best things you can eat. And the outside peelings, I guess, if they're going to stick their hands in your lemonade, then I guess you have a problem. But otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. Very good. Thanks, Barb, for the call tonight. Uh, the toll free. Yeah, I mean, if it was just a couple little girls cooking hamburgers by themselves, <laughs> I might be a little more concerned. You're juggling knives. <laughs> uh, you know, about, well, did you cook the burger for long enough? How were your handling techniques? But I'm not so worried about some kids squeezing some lemons and adding some sugar to some water. I'm really just... Yeah, you know, doesn't bug me. If you've got a kid, uh, I mean, this stuff has to happen to you constantly. Um, you know, my son, I, every it seems like every opportunity he gets, he'll skip a hand washing. Right? You send him in there mm, to wash oh, his yeah. hands, and did you use soap? <laughs> well, no. When I ask you to wash your hands, I swear every time I ask you to wash your hands, what I mean is, please use soap. Okay, that water, soap. Scrub them really good because yeah. when you wash your hands on the towel, I don't really need your dirty little hands making the towel dirty. Yeah. Like the, 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 the dirt should have come off when you washed your hands. That's the point of the friction. Um, <laughs> you have to keep explaining that, huh? I, well, I, you know, it's. It, <laughs> you ought to be a dead man by now, Mark, with all that uh, the germs running around. He'll drink right out of my water. Maybe we need a new washing hands permit. Uh, we'll call the police chief out and oh wait, there isn't one in your town. Uh, but you could, in theory, and uh, you know, get the government to make a new permit for little kids. Yeah, you know, teach them obedience. Yeah, my right favorite quick. thing is when he sort of brings me some kind of food or beverage, and you know, like hands right there where you're gonna put your mouth. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just wipe this in my shirt. Carl all right. is with us, listening to uh, listening in Atlantic City to WPG. Hey, Carl. Yeah. I 
I just wanted to tell you a town near me, Summers Point, New Jersey. They say they're the uh, way to the shore or some nonsense. You have to license your cats in Summers Point, New Jersey. How ridiculous. <laughs> wow. And I was I, wondering where, where right. they would have you license cats. Figures. Yep, Summers. Yep. And I, I own two cats, but I really think they own me. Yeah. And if, if, if they don't right, if they don't like living with me, they'll go somewhere else. So proving a, that you own a cat, I think, would really be tough. What do you think? I think you are right on, Carl. Thank you for making the call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty three. With mine, I'd like to make uh, figure out some way to make it leave. So I went uh, to look for the update. Because, again, these two little girls were threatened by the police. Mom, ultimately, she was willing to go to City Hall because the police chief had told her they'd get the permit for free. Uh, This health permit or whatever. The lemonade permit. And so she was willing to go as far as City Hall. But when City Hall told her, you've got to go to the health department, she said, screw this. This is ridiculous. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing from the the first article. What's the point in getting a permit if it's free? Um, obedience, that's the point. When it comes to gu- lemonade, at least. I, I mean, I've, you know, that they can hand you a pamphlet on hand washing, that would be a really great idea. Well, I mean, obviously, the money makes no difference on the piece of paper, right? Like, money is just what typically goes along with the obedience of the permit. They were supposedly willing to waive the fee in this case because it didn't make them look like complete tyrants uh, when they did that. But ultimately, whether or not a fee is paid, the piece of paper still looks the same. Right. Uh, the piece of paper, of course, still has no power whatsoever to stop E. coli or any other bacteria from spreading. And putting money behind the piece of paper is not going to stop those things from spreading either. Well, giving the paper away, uh, in that case, away for free also gives legitimacy to the paper, which, of course, they're trying to sell at $150 a piece to everybody else who doesn't get a national story. The toll free number is 855 450 free. So we'll talk about what happened to these girls because they were supposed to start their lemonade stand up today for donations, not for cash. And we'll jump into that here in moments, 855-450 free if you want to share your thoughts with us on the lemonade crackdowns in the U.S. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Usually, the older one gets, the less you are able to absorb amino acids and the less you are able to repair the 100 trillion cells of your body. As a result, you'll have less energy, your tissues will shrink, and you'll become wrinkled. An older person will typically injure more easily and heal more slowly. Not fun. However, if you can consume a protein powder that is easier to absorb, then you may be able to gain back some strength, muscle, and speed of recovery. One World Whey is a highly digestible whey protein powder that may be the perfect answer for you. My name is Errol. I'm 74 years old. You know, the taste of One World Whey is amazing. I play pickleball, and since taking One World Whey and your trace mineral supplement, I have more energy and recover faster from my working out. I used to take another grass-fed whey protein powder, but now I'm getting much better results using One World Whey. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. 
Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn, you'll be inspired, you'll make new friends, you'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. About Jared as well. Jared, gay guy. It's Free Talk Live. Hey, you can bring up anything you want here on the radio with me, Ian. Oh, and me not turning my, uh, Mark's microphone <laughs> and on. me, Mark. The first time it was for good reason because you actually weren't in the studio at that moment. But now you were, so I failed. Uh, so you can join us here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You may Skype into the show, which no one has availed themselves of yet tonight. It's there for you if you want it, and you'll sound better. The Skype username is lrn.fm. So here's a tip. If you've called the show before on the phone and you want to try Skype, then just send us a contact request. Once that's approved, you'll be good to go to call us on Skype from that point forward. And even if you're on your cell phone and you don't have some fancy headphone set or something in front of your computer, your cell phone will sound better over Skype than it does over the phone. It's true. Unless you've got a crappy digital. You've got to have good signal. You either be on Wi-Fi or on a good like 3G or 4G signal. But as long as you, you know, you've got good data, then you'll be sounding great on Skype. So, again, username lrn.fm. I want to tell you about Fort Galt. What Fort Galt is, is it's, a, it's really a project unlike any I've heard anywhere before. They're going to build a, a condominium complex, but it's... It's really unusual condominium complex. They're going to have small units. Um, so in one case, I think it's uh, f uh, the smallest unit is like four feet by 10 feet, and it's $10,000, really cheap. And they're going to have lots of common areas, uh, obviously common bathrooms, because um, it's just going to have uh, – this, this unit's just going to have a desk and, and a bed in it. Um, common kitchens, common coffee shops, restaurants, places for entrepreneurs, uh, freelancers, world travelers, um, folks to get together, collaborate, and socialize and create a synergy around their products, uh, projects that, that wouldn't otherwise be there. It's a really interesting idea. Entrepreneurs and, and their families, obviously. Check it out at fortgalt.com. This is occurring in Chile. So they're getting outside the United States and the regular, you know, huge regulatory burden that's in the United States. For I bet there's no lemonade permit down there. <laughs> I said, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't checked into Just willing to bet. I would bet you're right. Yeah. FortGalt.com. So Galt is like it's in John Galt. from G A L T. At yeah, from Atlas Shrugged. F O R T G A L T dot com. They have excellent videos there, um, and the website's set out set up in a really awesome way. I think you're if you go over there, just check it out. If you're interested at all, uh, then you will not be you will not feel like your time is wasted. You also don't have to have all the money up front. Um, you pay as they as they're successful in reaching their goals, and um, you can even rent out the unit and get it paid back. So it could be a good investment. FortGolt.com. Let's go to Woody listening in Columbia, South Carolina to WQXL. Hey, Woody. Hey, how y'all guys doing tonight? Go ahead, sir. Listen, doing great. Y'all want to hear a, 
Y'all want to hear a nightmare about dog licenses. I'm yes, I do. I'm from you South Carolina, too, the same city that that guy called in earlier, which is in Richland County. I don't know if y'all ever heard about that. Mm-mm. Which city was it? I'm sorry. Columbia, South okay, Carolina, got it. in Richland County. Yep. The county that had the biggest debacle in the 2012 voter machine problem. Matter of fact, Hillary Clinton even mentioned it the other day on one of her campaigns. Okay. So what happened with the licensing? Well, about 10 years ago, I got tagged, and I didn't know it. I knew in the city of Plum you had to register dogs. I didn't know in the county. They come by and tag me. And on the tag, of course, the person writing, and I couldn't hardly read what they were saying, but they said I had to have my dogs licensed in Richland County. And if I didn't have them registered by X amount of days, it was going to cost me $1,055 and oh. 59 cent fine. So... I called them, and I asked them, I said, how long do I have before, because I have to have them vaccinated with papers, with rabies, before I can get them registered. Mm -hmm. I said, how long do I have to have before I have to have them registered do y'all going to give me before y'all charge me this $1,055.59? And the lady said, sir, that's not the fine for registering. That's the fine for barking nuisance. If we get called again for a barking nuisance, it's one thousand fifty-five dollars and fifty-nine cent per dog. So they had already had been called 20... once for a barking complaint. Right. That's why they come and tag that's me. That's how they got your. Okay. 20... That's how you got on their radar. Got it. I had twenty-six dogs. Wow. I got hunt dogs, deer dogs, and rabbit dogs. How big's your property? And I mean, you got to have big property for 26 dogs, right? No, I live about a mile and a half out of the city limits. I don't live in a neighborhood. Oh, wow. You're yeah. like a crazy dog guy. I mean, you don't, <laughs> don't normally hear about that. I, I'm a hunter. I've been dog hunting all my whole life. I got deer dogs. And That's I got a lot of damn dogs. dogs. I mean, would you describe yourself as a crazy dog man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so what dog, happened? So my, what ultimately happened with your licensing my, thing? Well, anyway, I got it. They told me that the, it was if they're spayed or neutered, it was $4 a dog. If not, it's $20 a dog, unless yep. I had a kennel license. So I went to the wildlife park and got a kennel license. They, two years ago, they changed the law again. And said, now the kennel license ain't good enough. I had to be a member of some kind of nationwide hunting dog organization. Well, I don't know of any nationwide hunting dog organization. This was just to get a a damn license? To keep from paying the the fine. It it just so happens that Free Talk Live is a national hunting dog association. If you send me an email at (laughs) marketfreetalklive.com, I'll send you back um, an organizational email where you can just show the bureaucrats that you therefore have a a, a permit from a national hunting dog association. They can change the rules anytime they like. Woody, thanks for the call. Appreciate the story. Toll-free number is 855-453. And you can share your experience with us. We're talking about ridiculous uh, dog licensing. I think the idea is ridiculous. But let me give the counter argument, Mark, because no one has called with this yet. And so I'll play devil's advocate okay. on this one uh, for you. Look, Mark, we got to have dog licenses. I mean, you, the government needs to know who's got what animal. And b- besides that... Uh, you know, there. If rabies happens, I mean, the, the, having these this information could be very, very valuable. Having the data on who's got dogs and that kind of thing. I mean, this is important. When was the last time the government actually was able to use information that they had collected particularly well? Well, Mark, you know, even if if it hasn't used the information in recent time, the money does go to a good purpose, and that is to keep. Uh, you know, stray dogs off the streets. We're sending our animal uh, control officers around. And this is the money, you know, the money that comes from the dog licenses does go to help that process. Don't people that don't have dogs benefit from uh, animal control officers too? 
Yeah, I guess they would be the ones who are probably more likely to call animal control, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. so peop- everybody should pay for animal control officers if they benefit everybody. Mm. Um, I would also well, point out that the, the license is likely to have a, the breed of dog on it, mm-hmm. and there are certain people out there that l- don't like particular breeds, and they'd like to see those breeds eliminated entirely. Like a so pit bull. Y- we could very well have the pit bull holocaust based on dog licenses. They have had that. It's actually happened. I think it was Oklahoma, if I'm recalling correctly, and I don't remember if it was the whole state or the county or whatever. But. Yeah, and, d- and I'm and I'm talking to you, Stafford uh, Bulldogs. I'm talking to you, Rottweiler owners. I'm talking right. to you, Doberman owners. we yeah. got time for you. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. This is the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. More coming up. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, There's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to onesilversolution.com, onesilversolution.com. There is only one Silver Solution. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Overburdened with material comforts, America's wealthy can expect another disappointing holiday this year. As Brian Scott tells us, the rich will simply be buying too many things to experience the true meaning of Christmas. All across the country, those at the top of the economic ladder are denied a privilege that the poorest of the poor take for granted. Rather than fall victim to the rampant consumerism that seems to increase each year, the poor find meaningful joy in simple Christmas traditions, like singing carols to keep warm and hugging relatives who have not yet died. At stores like these, the spiritually bereft must scramble for popular holiday toys in a vain attempt to duplicate the Christmas time happiness that the impoverished enjoy. Poor people are grateful for just a roof over their heads or something to eat. My wife and I are both lawyers. So that's not enough for us. I certainly hope poor people don't take what they don't have for granted. This is the Onion News Network. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian. And Mark. You've got Skype as well. Skype usernames lrn.fm. We've been discussing why it is that we need these government licenses. If it weren't for these pieces of paper, we would be constantly threatened by uh, life-threatening diseases and little girls with lemonade stands, as well as uh, dogs. Dogs would be biting people more often if it wasn't for these government licenses. Uh, There's just so many ridiculous things that people can say to justify needing a government license for these things. And we've heard a lot of stories tonight about dog licenses, but there actually was someone who called in, and I'm shocked by this. Somebody actually called in to say they thought the two little girls we were talking about here, uh, age seven and eight in Texas, that they should have to have some sort of permit in order to sell lemonade. I did not know we would ever get that phone call on the show, and it's uh, it's been a real banner night as a result. Uh, the toll-free number here, if you want to join us, is 855-450-FREE. We'll uh, continue with your calls. Plus, I want to get to the update from the story about the girls. They, again, we're planning on reopening their lemonade stand today after being threatened earlier in the week, apparently, by the police. And uh, they were going to reopen it for donations. There's an update. We'll get to that. But I want you to also know about ExpressCoin. And I wonder if these girls had uh, decided to take Bitcoin for their lemonade. If not, somebody should tell them about it. Because you don't have to, there's no minimum age to open a Bitcoin account. You can go and create a Bitcoin wallet as long as you have the technical know how of how to do that. And it's really easy to open up your own Bitcoin wallet. Anyway, ExpressCoin.com is where you get Bitcoins. It's one of the. Uh, places out there and it's probably the best option for you it's fast safe easy and inexpensive and they are licensed money services business because again if they don't get the license probably some men with guns will come in and stop their business yeah they're not a bunch of little girls right so uh you know you get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check when you use express coin so it is very easy and you can start off whether in the U.S. or Canada at ExpressCoin.com. You can even use your smartphone to get an app from ExpressCoin.com, and you can use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. You can buy a lot of lemonade for 40 bucks. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. I bet that's been done, though, Mark. I bet there has been a Bitcoin lemonade stand. And if not, somebody ought to consider it. It, you know, with Lemonade, you've got to appeal to a mass audience. I don't think That's you— That's true. You know, at this point, I would say fewer than 1% of people have Bitcoins. You want that if you have a bit like an online business. But it would be an outreach project, Mark. It wouldn't be—the the point of the Bitcoin but Lemonade You're going to sit there and say, no Lemonade for you. You don't have you don't have bitcoins. <laughs> you have to pay bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Here, we'll get you set up with a wallet. You can download the Airbits wallet. It only takes a moment. Uh, and then, of course, they'd have to get the Bitcoin, too. Yeah. yeah. And then you can sell them the Bitcoin there. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> At the very least, it would probably get a few people interested in Bitcoin. Anyway, go to ExpressCoin.com. just want some lemonade. Use coupon code FTL. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Let's go first to Charlie in Loris, South Carolina, listening to WLSC. Hey there, Charlie. Hey, how you doing? Can you hear me? Great, you're on the air. And uh, just do me a favor, step back from, uh, just, j- I guess, move your mouth back from your phone by about an inch, and you'll sound a little better. Go ahead. How's that? That's good. Go ahead, sir. Okay. We're talking about ridiculous licenses. And in South Carolina, I'm also from South Carolina. It might be a South Carolina thing. But I don't know if many people know that, but I got involved in professional wrestling a few years ago, and there are about 40 states that regulate professional wrestling where you have to get a license to be a wrestler, a referee, a ring announcer, or a guy that hangs outside the ring. Wow. That's crazy. (laughs) Yes. Well, I mean, it's you really, and they, and they pay government officials to sit there and go to wrestling shows (laughs) and make sure all your wrestlers have a license. Now there's nothing to say the easy thing to license is to get a physical and you pay the money, give them your information and they give you a license. Sure. But if you don't have a license, they find the promoter $500, each wrestler that's not licensed. So it makes things difficult if you want to bring in, you know, let's say we want to bring in Rick Flair or somebody has a big name and they don't have a South Carolina license, I can't bring them in. And, it, it, you know, a lot of these performers don't make any money. We're talking about independent wrestling here. We're not talking about, like, the WWE and these big people that— Yeah, these are the people don't. who are doing wrestling for the love of wrestling and maybe hoping someday they can make a break, right? 
Right. Absolutely. And our, the surrounding states don't require that. So it's difficult for us to bring in people. But, you know, when I got involved in it, and I, and I actually mentioned to Governor Haley about, do you, under, do you know who the state regulates professional wrestling? And she, she kind of laughed at me for a second. And actually none of the state legislators that I know in my area actually knew that the Athletic Commission, which their only purpose is to monitor MMA in professional wrestling. But you don't actually it. expect and government officials to read the laws that they write, do you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, or it, know them. It would take four lifetimes for the for anybody to who who spent all of their time reading laws. It would take four lifetimes for them to read the laws in the United States. It's absolutely ridiculous at this point. Of course, the cops don't know them. Of course, the politicians don't know them. And this is such it's so obviously transparent, at least to me, that this wrestling licensing organization of the states is basically a glorified way for uh, the state's workers who love wrestling to go to a bunch of free wrestling matches and further get money for it. Because, I mean, how is a state permit or some sort of piece of paper or license going to ensure anything about a wrestling match? It's all staged anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess we should be just glad. to get at Right. I guess we should just be glad <laughs> that no one would go for the state bikini inspector. Oh, well, they would do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Come on. You can't get. If they thought they could get away with it. If they thought, right? That's the thing. Is this the, I, the women of America it, would rise up? They would. No, have they wouldn't. Claw their eyes out. I don't know if they would because they've had that in the past, Mark. You know, the beaches back in like a hundred years ago. That yeah, they did uh, have people Atlantic with like City. rulers going around yeah. and making sure that bathing suits if, were modest enough. Well, right. I mean, if your bathing suit was, uh, you know, I don't know what the rule was, but it's some amount of inches above your ankle yep. or something like that, you'd get a ticket. And so, I mean, it's it's not implausible they could bring that back. Remember when they arrested the guy with the Borat bathing suit on the boardwalk? I forget which town that was in Jersey. I thought that was Atlantic City. It might have been Atlantic City. I don't remember for sure. But, uh, you know, he had a Borat-style suit, which is kind of like a strap. I guess not everyone's seen Borat. Uh, so it's like, I don't know how you describe it. It's like a, almost like a spaghetti strap. Thin. It's a flying V <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that has your crotch on one end and your shoulders on the other, yeah. and there's nothing else. Yeah, he it's bent. really a bad, bad idea for any person to put this on. He also bent over, and you know you could see his penis for a short moment uh, as he bent over to kind of fix something. Yeah, that's bad for everybody. It. But, you know, no, it's not. It's just a penis. Jeez, get over it. Charlie, anything else you want to share tonight? Oh, that's it, guys. Just want listeners to make aware that, you know, hey, spread the word. There's, there's all kinds of commissioners and commissions in each state that they may not be aware about that's really robbing them of their money Absolutely. and, and over-regulating everything. Thank you for that's the call it, tonight, Thanks Charlie. I consider any regulation over-regulation, unless it's done by the marketplace, unless it's done by people who are doing it for a consensual, voluntary purpose of trying to, to elevate their business over another one. So certifications are a way to do that. You know, if I want to go and get some sort of, I don't know what the hell there is for this, but a, some kind of radio talk show certification, uh, you know, maybe there's something for the like the advertising side of the industry, I, I, a National Advertising Bureau certification yep. or something Well, it's like the uh, Radio Advertising Bureau, and yeah. um, they do have a, um, I can't remember, it's, it's, a, it's some kind of, uh, you know, certificate that they give you. Yeah. Um, I actually passed the course for it, but for whatever reason, since I um, I passed the course like a week before I got fired from the show. Do you remember that? It wasn't me. I yeah, didn't do yeah, it. It wasn't you. Um, and it was back I, when we worked for Clear Channel. I never got the piece of paper, so... Ah, okay, interesting. Well, so that essentially showed that you had done your research, you had taken some kind of test that you knew about the various different terms in the radio advertising business and how kind of measurements work and things like that. I'm just guessing here. Yeah, right? that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, you know, certifications are a way that you can differentiate yourself. And in the IT field, you see this a lot. You'll see uh, MS, MCSE, Microsoft certifications, and various other Linux Whatever, there's different things that you can certify yourself with so you can show your customer, hey, I know my stuff. These guys say so. Uh, with restaurants, there's Zagat's, of course, Surf Safe. Make sure that uh, the employees behind the counter know what they're doing. Zagat's is, I think, more of like a quality and service guarantee. 855 450 free. You can take control here. Lemonade licensing, more of that coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? 
Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. A liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius, zog.ninja, code FTL. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to onesilversolution.com, One Silver Solution. Solution.com. There is only one silver solution. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, join us here on our live Saturday edition. The Us is me, Ian. And me, Mark. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Anytime you like, we're there uh, live for you. Three hours per night, seven nights a week. But the other 21 hours a day, we've got a live stream that will uh, broadcast, sort of rebroadcast our most recent episode. You can download archives galore all the way back for multiple years. You can get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners. There's a chat room. You can submit content right to the front page of the website. It's pretty cool, and it's free. So go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. As we continue, uh, we've got Michael. He's calling from Virginia Beach, listening to WNIS. Michael, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. 
Hi, Ian and Mark. Hi, Michael. Um, story for you. My young daughter, we have a cat. This was about 10 years ago. Uh, cat's in her lap. She's playing with the cat. Cat wants to get out of her lap. Uh, she's wearing a uh, short sleeve shirt. And uh, cat, you know, as cats are, they just jump out of the lap. Well, it accidentally scratches her when it jumps out of her lap. Uh, we clean it off. We don't think anything about it. A couple days later, um, it looks like it's getting infected. So we take it to the doctor. And as they're looking at it and uh, doing what they do, they ask, you know, how do you think she got this? And we say, well, you know, she might have got it from the cat. And so automatically they go into Ted Nugent mode and they start talking about cat scratch fever. And uh, Saturday of that week, a couple days later, get a knock at the door and there is the animal control people. Whoa. Uh, full regalia. And we've come for your cat. Wow. Um, so now, you answered the door. You answered the door. Okay. Yeah, I got, got you. And uh, it's like, honey, there's armed people at the door. Um, now, what's funny is um, we had recently moved from one city to another. We have four cats. Um, we had just taken in a stray cat. And because the cat was outside, uh, we uh, took it to the vet where they did you know, all the tests they have to do, and they gave us a certificate for the cat. Mm -hmm. The other cats are all house cats, never go outside. We don't really think about that. Well, we end up substituting the recently certified cat's records for the criminal cat's uh, uh, salvation, you might say. Um, and it's like, well, your cat's got to be quarantined. So wait, just to clarify, you gave up... The stray cat <laughs> in place of the cat that actually scratched your daughter. I feel guilty still, but yes, that's exactly Oh, man. <laughs> hey, we only, what can we you say? You're going to give up the cat that the uh, you, you have the less— the I would have liked to know if they have a warrant. I mean, what was it that—did uh, <laughs> they? I don't know. But listen, it gets, it gets stranger, okay? So the cat has to be quarantined because it maybe has rabies. So uh, they say we can keep the cat in the house, but let us know if it gets Cujo on it. Uh, we don't keep that cat call. in the house. It's an outdoor cat. <laughs> we, uh, they call us up. Is the cat okay? Yes. The cat is not adult rabies. Everything's cool. So then I just asked them, though. I said, now, what would happen if, I mean, uh, you know, it's a kid. Um, they don't think all the time. Mm -hmm. So what if the cat this happens again. It's like, well, if this happens again, sir, we have to put the cat down. Mm. If the cat scratches a kid again? Yes. Wow. Now, I, I can't I tell said, you how many times I've been scratched by a cat. That's what cats do. I mean, if they... okay, well, listen, to take it to an extreme, I said, I asked him, I said, when I was a kid, I used to have hamsters all the time, and I would break them in because uh, as soon as you would try to pick them up and stuff, you know, they might nip at you. So I would wear gloves and I would eventually break them in. But I can't tell you how many times I would get nipped by a hamster. I sure. Mean, just, I've got a scar animal. on my hand right now from a hamster. I woke up from a sound sleep. I, Chomp. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know not to wake up hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but these, this is natural. These are yeah, animals. It is. Yeah, it is. And Cats jump out of your lap. They might scratch you. A hamster might nip you. If you play with and a cat, it's so going to scratch you. Don't ever play with a cat, kids, because it might yeah. scratch you. That's what they do. Well, so, so, I, so I asked him, I said, so if we were to have a hamster and it were to nip me, um, they said, yes, sir. If if you had, if that gets reported, it would die, to too. Do the same thing. How do they go about doing it? Oh. I mean, do they take the hamster in a special little hamster cage back to their special hamster killing Poison facility? It. Or do they just, yeah, you just, know, put I, it in I a brown paper bag light. and put it under the wheel of their car as they pull out? I mean, what do they do? No, oh, no, no. I think they're probably more humane than that. Probably have a little gas chamber. And, you know, they clear everybody out of the way. Dead hamster walking. No, it's probably um, more expensive than that is what you mean. <laughs> so, Michael. So um, I asked him. Yeah, go I ahead. Said, so what would happen? What would happen if that ha you know that I had a hamster there twice? They said, "Sir, we'd have to put the hamster down." I said, "That is just insanely stupid. It's a huge overreach of government."
and at that point, the woman said, you know, I don't make the laws. Right? Uh, ha, ha, ha. But she's there knocking but, on your door. Now, uh, is is the reason the animal control guys came, or lady or whoever came there because the veterinarian snitched you out? They are required by law yep. to, to turn you in. If you bring a child, you know, child in or you come in, and in the course of their investigation, how'd you get this scratch? Well, dang, cat scratch. I mean, darn this thing, you know, throwing it up in the air, and it landed, and it was a little upset when it hit the thing. Um, oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. It was a hospital. It was a, was it a walk-in. Where did you go? Not a veterinarian. Did... We went to, in this instance, we took our daughter to uh, one of those walk-in doctor walk box urgent care. So they places. were obligated by some sort of law in Virginia yeah, right. to turn you yeah. in. What ha- what if you had gone to some sort of facility outside of your area, or what if you'd given them you know information that wasn't necessarily your current address or whatever? Would that have saved you from this? Do you think? I don't. It, it, I don't know. This is what you get. This is what you get for trying to do the right thing, right? To go and get well, checked out, make sure everything's okay. I have they threaten pri- your cats. I have a private mailbox, and when people ask for my address, I give them the private mailbox address. Yeah, that's So they true. would have gone to a store where they could ship out some FedEx packages if that's what they happen to have with them. Right. But other than that, they would have no way of getting a hold of me. And this is a really great way to preserve your privacy. Good um, suggestion. You know, admittedly, it's nice to be able to walk out to the corner and get your mail, but... Eh, they, people can steal your mail out there. That's true. Michael, thanks for the call. Thanks for the story tonight. I appreciate it. It was a very interesting cat confiscation, threatening to take someone's cat because it scratched their own child. And a good hamster warning at, to boot. Yeah. There is no amount of absurdity that these government agents are not willing to reach. No height of ludicrousness that they are not willing to uh, to climb to. If you want to keep the scratches at a minimum from the cat, you just tr- sort of trim their their the, the pointy parts off of their claws. You don't mm-hmm. ha- you don't go way back or anything like that. You just take the the tips off every couple weeks, and then they spend their time trying to get them back all the time. Did I hear there's some sort of thing that you can put over top of them? Yeah, you can get these little uh, silicone like tips, uh-huh. and, but and glue them on there. I mean, good luck, have fun. Um, yeah, your your cat so isn't going to huh? think that's the the most awesome thing. And if your cat's as resilient as Mushu Pork, my your my cat. cat, yeah, um, he's, he just pulls them off with his teeth. So you know, I mean, I did manage to get them on, but it was it was difficult work, and I just find it's just easier to 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 take the tips off. So coming up, still we've got the update on the two girls, seven and eight years old, Zoe and Andrea. Uh, they wanted to take their father to a water park. This is the detail in the story that you didn't get before because you were wondering, Mark, you know, why do they need water park tickets if they wanted a Father's Day gift? Because they were supposedly ra- – the other article that we read said they were trying to raise money for a Father's Day gift and then went on to say they wanted to go to a water park. That's correct. They wanted to take Dad to the water park, and they wanted to do so with their own money. Uh, so they set up the lemonade stand, and apparently they've done this before. They've had the lemonade stand, They've so they're old hats at uh, doing this, and they've never had an issue. The dad works in the oil fields, apparently, in Texas, and he doesn't get to come home every night as a result. So right. this, was to be an especially meaning, this was to be an especially meaningful present for him. Uh, Mom said, we just decided to have an impromptu lemonade stand because the girls wanted to pay their own way. And then finally she was told that she needed a peddler's permit for the city of Overton further the city tells her that they have to go to get a permit from the health inspector, which is a county permit, which the city guy is not authorized to issue. So until I get the county permit and have to wait to do that, I then you know then take that to the city and then get the peddler's permit, which he has then offered to waive the fee on. So the fee was going to be waived on the peddler's permit from the city, but not the county health permit. So in point of fact, they needed two permits. What was unclear from the story before was it sounded like all the bureaucrats were just passing the buck. And they were, but apparently there's now twice as many permits required than was originally expected. This is how it goes, kids, when you go and you look into starting your own business. You think it's a matter of just opening up the doors? Oh, no, no, no. Officer Ollie's here to help you, kids. <laughs> Yeah, help you into a jail cell or destroy your lemonade stand, 855 450 free. But what happened today when they reopened the stand? It's Free Talk Live. We'll tell you coming up. Attention, business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. 
These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, June 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.96 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports recent concerns about sites from antiquity being damaged in war have mostly centered around the Islamic State occupations in Syria. But attention quickly turned south yesterday with the news that the World Heritage Site in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a was the target of multiple airstrikes. UNESCO Director General Arana Bakova yesterday said she was profoundly distressed by the news that one of the oldest urban landscapes in the region came under fire from Saudi warplanes and locals reported at least five civilians who lived in the area around the ancient neighborhood were killed. Sana'a's old city dates back to 2,500 years and is home to one of the oldest surviving mosques in the world. The extent of the damage is unclear, but several locals have released images showing some of the ancient buildings reduced to rubble in the wake of the strike. The extension of damage will likely continue to grow in the weeks and months to come as most of the buildings in this ancient neighborhood were cemented together and the fall of some is putting new pressure on the foundations of others causing cracks across the area. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports nearly 1 in 10 men in the United States experience some form of depression or anxiety. However, less than half of them get treatment, according to a new study. Among men who experience either depression or anxiety, black and Hispanic men were less likely than white men to either report mental health concerns or treat them if they did report them, according to a new study from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Stephen Blumberg, an associate director for science at the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics, told Health We suspect that there are several social and cultural pressures that lead black and Hispanic men to be less likely than white men to seek mental health treatments. He said these pressures, which include ideas about masculinity and the stigma of mental illness, may be more pronounced in men of color, and these same forces may lead men of color to be more likely to deny or hide feelings of anxiety or depression. Researchers at the National Center for Health Statistics reviewed data collected in a poll of 21,000 men, finding that 8.5% had 
daily feelings of depression or anxiety, yet only 41% of these men took medication or sought treatment for the condition. Among men aged 18 to 44, black and Hispanic men were 30% less likely to experience depression or anxiety. However, they were 7% less likely to seek treatment than non-Hispanic white men who experienced either one. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports federal prosecutors on Friday petitioned a judge to keep secret their evidence in the case against former U.S. House Speaker Dennis Hastert, who pled not guilty on Tuesday to charges of trying to hide cash transactions and lying to the FBI about it. Hastert had allegedly paid close to $2 million to an individual to conceal past misconduct, which was reportedly sexual contact with a male student while he was a teacher and coach in the 1960s and 70s. In a motion filed before Judge Thomas Durkin, who is hearing the Hastert case, prosecutors said sensitive information in the case should not be disseminated because it would adversely affect the privacy interest of third parties and also said that Hastert's defense attorney does not oppose the motion. Prosecutors asked the judge to restrict distribution of material in the case to key defense personnel and witnesses and asked that copies not be made without the court's permission. They also asked to submit under a court seal certain materials that they said were sensitive. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. NASA's recent discovery of water on Mercury has led to speculation among scientists that the planet could potentially sustain an intergalactic space prison housing the universe's worst criminals. Scientists believe that organic compounds found on the planet's surface could be useful for creating an off-world space Australia, where strength is the only law. However, they caution it is too early to say whether or not fights among the space jail's prisoners would be broadcast here on Earth for the entertainment of wealthy gamblers. But NASA's lead researchers do say that Mercury's ability to support human life raises important questions about who the prison guards would be. Perhaps the guards themselves would be space mercenaries, or maybe we'd just use robots. The robots would have guns for hands. Well, obviously. Critics inside NASA caution against funneling too many resources into the Mercury project when it would be so much cooler to build a prison on the moon ruled by clones of the prisoners themselves. Researchers encourage the public to read their findings, which have been released in the form of a graphic novel titled The Mercury Cipher. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free and join us here. Bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The live Saturday edition with Ian and Mark back in the studio after a couple of day, uh, days off from the show as you and I were in New York City and Manhattan, Mark, to a talkers convention where yep. talk show hosts and program directors and managers and big wigs schmooze it up for a day uh, and it's a lot of fun. We enjoy going, and I think this was either our ninth or tenth year. We've gone so many times, I've lost track. I'm pretty sure we went no 05 the first time, so this should have been our tenth time around. Speaking of large-numbered events, the 12th Porcupine Freedom Festival is coming up in just over a week. So yeah. uh, on Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday, the 21st, we'll begin a week of on location broadcasting, there's nothing else quite like the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I'm very excited about going. It is not too late to get tickets, although they have gone up to, I believe, the sort of maximum price at this point because you've waited a long time. You've been procrastinating too long at this point, so you will have to pay the full price for the tickets. They are now offering a day pass, by the way, so if you want to go up just for the weekend or something like that, you don't have to buy the, the full week-long ticket, so keep that in mind as well. Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. I'm I'm super excited about it. It's going to be a big week of uh, you know planning and packing, and then all next week will be sort of like a working vacation for us. It's it's really a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. All right. So uh, to bring you up to speed, in case you're just tuning in, 
We're talking about another lemonade crackdown. It's been a while since I've heard about one of these stories. That doesn't mean they haven't been happening. It just means I just happen, haven't seen them yet. Uh, Zoe and Andrea, age 7 and 8, they wanted to raise the money to take their dad out for Father's Day to a water park. That sounds like fun. Who doesn't like water parks? I mean, unless you're afraid of the water. Uh, they're really a lot of fun. And so that's what their goal was. They wanted to do a lemonade stand, which they have done multiple times, according to their mom. But this time, the police showed up about an hour after they opened for business. And the police said that she needed to go and get a permit from the city. And they claimed the city would waive the $150 peddler's fee. But then when mom went to the city and actually inquired about this thing, they then told her, well, we can't give you the peddler's fee until you have a health code permit, and you'll need to go to the county for that. At this point, Mom said, screw this. This I'm is dizzy. ridiculous. So It's a surprise that any innovation occurs in this country at all with all the, you know, the regulations and permits and licensing and all that other stuff. It's hard to really imagine, Mark, how much more innovative com- companies could be, how many new upstarts. You know, uh, Uber and Lyft, for instance, these ride-sharing companies were able to start without permits because they had the balls to just go out there and do it. And then ever since, they've been attacked left and right by governments all over the place. That's the punishment for innovators, for people who get into an industry and bring fresh ideas to the table. It didn't even take that for me. I mean, I've got to say that, am I the only one that is so thoroughly irritated by government stuff that I just, I mean, this was, you know, years before I started doing this show, I got, uh, you know, I got fired from a job. Mm -hmm. Basically, the company went under and, um, you know, a new company was going to come in its place, but I needed a job in the meantime. And... Uh, I went to the unemployment agency and I'm like, hey, I need unemployment or whatever. And they they gave me some, f- you know, flyer and said to call this number. And, you know, I just I was so irritated at that point that things uh, didn't go my way um, that I just went out and got a job. I had a job within a few days and yep. I, I decided, you know, I don't need this unemployment crap. Um, and I probably wouldn't have gotten the job as quickly if that, I mean, I did, it it disincentivized to me. You now, meaning I, that the business could have opened sooner had they not had to jump through a bunch of government hoops? What do you, which business are you referring to? The new one that was going to open up. Is that why it was no, taking so long? No, I'm talking about I went out and got a different job rather than just filling out their um, unemployment thing. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I missed a detail on that. Yeah, apparently you were fiddling around with something or something else. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it could have been that they needed government permits in order to open up the doors. I mean, that is pretty typical, right? Like, you know, you generally can't open up some business just by starting it up. I mean, well, there's going to be men with guns coming in to threaten you. In this case, a radio station uh, changed ownership. Mm-hmm. And in that amount, of, it was going to be like three weeks until I could even talk to the new owner to uh, see whether yeah. or not I would be working at that new station. I did happen to, but there was no reason for me to assume that I was going to be. So Yeah, with radio, it's a little different. I guess you, uh, they're so heavily regulated, you can't even change ownership without the FCC right. paying so they were attention to that. All shut down. So let me get back into the story here, Mark, from the Lemonade Stand uh, with the two girls, because the, the, the story we started the show with on this uh, only told us what happened earlier this week. Now, what has happened today is the latest, because they opened up the stand again today, this time for donation. They were not charging for the popcorn and the lemonade that they were attempting to sell earlier in the week. This is a great way to sort of get around it, and you'll probably get more being seven- and eight-year-old little girls. Although the girls were disheartened, this is from the Tyler uh, local newspaper in Tyler, Texas, the Tyler Morning Telegraph at tylerpaper.com. Although the girls were disheartened, they were well, determined. If you, if you can't count on the government to dash the dreams of little girls, who can you count on to do it? They were determined not to give up. That's when the Tyler Morning Telegraph reported the story, and since then... The girl's plight has been heard nationwide. The girl's oldest sister, Jessica Hidalgo, age 25, describes them as headstrong, calling Andrea a born leader. 19-year-old sister Allison Horton said she was very proud of her sisters. The girls also have an older brother who is in the military. Ms. Hidalgo said, I wasn't surprised when they decided to keep moving forward and try to get support for another one. We're thankful and blessed people are supporting them. It's for our dad, unquote. The girls decided to find a way to keep going. They found that while they couldn't sell the lemonade, they could give it away and accept tips. After an outpouring of support, including tickets to Six Flags and Splash Kingdom, they decided any money would go to a scholarship dedicated to the memory of two family members. If support exceeds expectations, the family will start the girls, excuse me, the Green Girls, that's their last name, Green, 
the Green Girls Lemonade Scholarship. I don't think anybody thought they were green, dude. For business administration students. So that's nice. So they're talking about, you know, they had such an outpouring of support from people nationwide. They already got the tickets they were looking to raise the money for to the water park. So it's wonderful that, you know, the kind-hearted people of America stepped up to help these girls out when the black-hearted government goons refused to do anything to help them in any way, shape, or form. Oh, yeah, they were going to waive the permit fee. Whoopie-doo. Of one of two permits. Remember, they still needed a health code permit uh, on which the county government had not intended and does not intend to waive their fee. But I think there's an interesting point here. Remember, the government's excuse, the police chief's excuse from the first news story was that this is about bacteria. We need to get these girls to have a permit from the health department and the, you know, peddler's permit because of bacteria as a possibility. This is scary. Health code, fear. Well, wait a minute. Now they can just get around all that by accepting donations instead of selling it? Why does the act of selling lemonade put it at greater risk of a bacterial in, you know, infection? Or this whatever is a philanthropic that. infection. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't a commercial infection. I mean, this is really the, the ludicrousness of all this. I, it, it's absolutely insane. So I mean, if it isn't obvious here that this isn't that this is a license intended to protect the the government from the fact that people would compete with other businesses that have already paid the government for licenses, I mean, this is what it obviously comes down to. They're not stopping infections. They weren't stopping infections the with first their first time. peddler's right. license because if that was the case, you wouldn't need a peddler's license. Just get the permit from the uh, the, the the housing uh, the health department. Steve uh, Maxwell came all the way from Shreveport to get a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Maxwell said, I disagree with the police chief very much. When I found out they were going to accept tips, I just told myself, I'm going to go. I just wanted to support them. Shreveport. <laughs> I came out from Shreveport yeah. uh, to go to this thing. Ms. Evans, that's mom. Now, here's where things get pretty sad. Ms. Evans, or Ms. Evans said she has seen a lot of bad information making the rounds on the internet and wanted people to know that they hadn't intentionally broken any laws. She says, We shut up shop right then, and we hadn't sold a cup of lemonade since. I strongly support the community, and I don't hate my community. Now, the editor put the community in parentheses, the first one. So the statement was, I strongly support it. And I don't hate my community. I presume it was it that the editor replaced with the community there. As though the government is the community. As though what the government wants is somehow a reflection of what the people around her actually want. Because I suspect if she had illegally opened that lemonade stand, the community would have still come out to support it. We'll the government is antisocial. It's Free Talk Live. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear, a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And right now you can try Listen Clear absolutely risk-free with free shipping. We'll even give you free batteries for life. So call now. 1-800-940-5957. Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your 100% risk-free home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now. 1-800-940-5957. That's 1-800-940-5957. 1-800-940-5957. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV 
Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're doing the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, we'll take your calls about anything. Maybe you are one of the people who supports cracking down on these little kids, little boys and girls. Just thinking they can go open up their own lemonade stand? Don't they know what country they live in? Land is free. This is the United States, and no one will open a lemonade stand without asking government permission. At least not in Texas, apparently. That's where this recent uh, iteration of this has happened. But don't think for a moment that this couldn't happen near you. Well, when, before the uh, before the country was founded, one of the problems that the the colonists had was is that all the licenses that the the king uh, you know handed out to his favorite folks, um, protesting licenses is about the most extraordinarily American thing you can do. All right, we're going to continue. We'll give you a little bit more on the uh, two little girls in Texas and what happened today when they reopened the lemonade stand as a donation only lemonade stand but first uh, you need to protect yourself when you're online and pro xpn can help you do that it's a global virtual private network they encrypt your data connection whether you're on your smartphone your laptop your desktop computer your business computer you get pro xpn you get it installed your connection is encrypted meaning your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online and that's valuable because it means they can't sell your information to anybody it means that they can't turn it over to the government and even if you don't think you're doing something illegal online, you might be surprised. Remember, it's illegal to sell lemonade. So you might just not know really what all is illegal <laughs> and isn't. Uh, so go and protect yourself. Plus, it'll help you avoid criminals sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets. Because, again, those packets will be encrypted. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. That's proxpn.com slash FTL. Grab the software. It's free for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. You get set up, get connected, and you're good to go. You're going to want to upgrade to their premium account, likely, because then you get the unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use this promo code to save 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy an annual account. The code is FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And the number 50, it breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month. 
So go to proxpn.com slash FTL, and don't forget promo code FTL50 as we continue here. More on the Little Girl's Lemonade Stand and what mom has to say about it now uh, several days later after a, a huge outpouring of support from people around the community. I have to say I'm a little disappointed with uh, with mom here, but we'll give you her quotes in just a moment. Uh, let's go first, though, to Gail listening in California. Gail, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hi, I'm calling from California. And regarding the dog license, uh, this is a verbatim quote. California Food and Agricultural Code Section 30951A provides an option to the city or county-issued dog license. This section provides, quote, a metallic tag which gives the name and post office address of the owner. Once this tag is attached to the collar of the owner's dog, the dog owner is in full compliance with state law. Awesome. This, is, this has been tested uh, locally, uh, local city. Uh, the fellow went up, talked to the chief of police. They argued about it. He finally consulted the proper state statutes, and he does not have to purchase a city dog license. So and you're saying further, if you follow the uh, code in California at the state level, that somehow overrides right. city ordinance? It sure does. It does. Uh, continuing on with that, California state constitution provides in Article 11, Section 7, a county or city may make and enforce within its limits all local police, sanitary, and other ordinances and regulations. And this is underlined, not in conflict with general laws. So a city or a county Dog license is in contact, mm. in conflict with general laws. Therefore, you refer back to Ag- Food and Agricultural Code Section 3. So wait a minute. I don't want to hear any more government laws. It's uh, about as much as I can take in uh, in any one sitting. So, Gail, so what you're saying is is that— The no, state uh, of California does not require a dog license by, issued by the city or county. But there is one <laughs> issued by the state, but it doesn't— it, No, it, there's not. There's just—basically, they have a rule that if you have your name on the and dog. address okay. exactly. on the dog— you don't, have, you don't have to purchase anything. So you can go—right, okay, I got you. You can just go to Petco and get a little hangy tag thing that's engraved exactly. or something. Okay, exactly. Okay, hey, cool, Gail. Thanks for the call tonight. appreciate the heads up. I'm sorry. I can only take so much government law reading. So I had one for my cat, Senior Grouchy Pants, um, and because I thought it was funny to put Senior Grouchy Pants on a tag, but I put my telephone number on there rather than yep. my address uh, Makes because sense. it made more sense to me that if the cat's gone, I'm liable to be out looking for the cat. Okay. If you find the cat and you bring him to my house— You're not there. Right. Then, you know, I'm not there. That didn't make much sense to me. So the, right. the law saying that you have to have your address on there— I suppose having an address is fine. You could have a telephone number, too. Mm-hmm. But I just, on this particular one, they only had three lines of text that you could put on it. So uh, I was stuck with, you know, Senior Grouchy Pants is a pretty long long name. So I could, all I could put was a telephone number. So in the first story about the lemonade crackdown in Texas on two little girls aged seven and eight for selling lemonade to try to raise money to go to a water park, uh, the mom sounded like she was really frustrated with the system at that time. She said it was ridiculous that she had to go to the health department at the county level, get a permit from them before she could get the permit for the peddler's permit from the city, which supposedly was going to waive the fee for the peddler's permit. She thought it was ridiculous. But here's what she says now in this follow-up story over at the Tyler, uh, Tyler Texas paper, the Tyler Morning Telegraph. She says, we shut up shop right then, and we haven't sold a cup of lemonade since. I strongly support it, and I don't hate my community. Unquote. Perhaps the most upsetting was... So it sounds like some uh, busybodies there um, that were, were trying to shame her mm-hmm. into not getting this permit because they because she hates the community or something like that. Or she, they wanted her to get the permit. She, right. They wanted right. her to get that permit permit for that reason. Or, you know, that she didn't sufficiently lick the boots of the uh, of the police officers that thought that it was a good idea to well, bother six, do that right seven now. and eight-year-olds uh, for yep. a permit for lemonade. She's going to lick some boot right now. Here we go. Quote, Uh, Or excuse me, the article says, perhaps most upsetting was the way people have attacked the character of Overton's police officers. Mom said, quote, these people don't know us. They don't know the closeness of our community. To sit behind a computer screen thousands of miles away and call our police chief scum is not fair, unquote. So she's talking about the people who were commenting on, you know, Facebook or the various different news articles that came out about this. And so she's defending the very same police chief who targeted her daughters for attack 
for running a lemonade stand. This is like, you know, a slave defending the the master for whipping their kids or something like that. It's sick. This woman is sick. She sees clearly that the lemonade licensing is completely ridiculous and, you know, it doesn't make any sense. the enforcer of the rule is somehow not responsible for their actions. And this is really... He's a good man. He's just doing his job. This is really difficult. Well, that's... Okay, so that was what was said in the Nuremberg trials, too. I mean, She didn't actually say that here. But but, I mean, this gets said all the time. Basically what she said. It it gets said all the time. And the fact is that if you're going to hold the government bureaucrat the government politicians responsible for having passed the law in the first place and everybody's willing to do that because everybody everybody hates them a politician well if you're going to hold the res- the politician responsible you need to hold law enforcement responsible for upholding that law too they have discretion they could have said you know what there's more important laws yes. to enforce right now we're going to go off and do that by the end of the day today the girls had raised about $600 Not too shabby. 855-450 free. It's free talk live. You can share your thoughts with us. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. 
Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. We've got time for you if you want to join us here on this live Saturday edition of the program, 855-450-FREE. That's toll-free, 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. Skype in at username lrn.fm. Mark, what super, super important Bitcoin website, super relevant Bitcoin website is for sale right now. The whole operation, not just the URL, not just the domain name, but the whole site. Spendbitcoins.com. It's one of the oldest and largest Bitcoin merchant directories, and it's for sale. Um, over 10,000 Bitcoin accepting merchants are listed on the website. It has over 3 million page views since its inception. It's number one on Google search uh, for terms such as, where can I spend Bitcoins? You can sell Bitcoins there, sell ads, sell premium listings. The world's your oyster. Do what you want with spendbitcoins.com. But you get you get yourself uh, the, one of the most important URLs uh, that have to do with the inside the Bitcoin sphere, and you get a business to go with it. Spendbitcoins.com slash sale to bid on it. And it's got about a day left. Spendbitcoins.com slash sale. At this point, uh, last I looked earlier in the show, is about uh, $4,000. Yeah, just over 4100 I think. Yep, something like that. Spend 4150 Spendbitcoins.com slash sale. All right. Our toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. So uh, if you have more comments on the Lemonade Crackdown, I'd love to hear it. Maybe uh, we can find another supporter of Cracking Down on Lemonade Stands. I couldn't believe we actually had one call earlier tonight. And you can join us on Skype as well if you'd like. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's change gears, Mark, and talk about Bitcoin. It's been a while since we've gotten into some Bitcoin-related news. There's a little bit of good news. Well, actually, there's a lot of good news in the Bitcoin sphere. I have a little bit of it uh, in my show prep for tonight, which is about uh, shapeshift.io. They're leaving New York State because they don't want to comply with the recently uh, developed bit license, as it's called. But let's instead talk about the bad news. The bad news is that the Washington Post is trashing Bitcoin. This has nothing to do with Bitcoin as a viable currency. It's incredibly viable and wonderful and currently worth over 230 U.S. dollars per Bitcoin and accepted by uh, you know industry and charities all around the globe. Bitcoin's awesome. If you don't know anything about it yet, it's a decentralized currency that is not issued by any bank or any government. Decentralized meaning that it can't be taken down. They can't raid. the. There's no central office. There's no Bitcoin company. Bitcoin's just an idea that is sort of curated by people who support the idea, essentially. Yeah. This is an indictment against the newspaper that printed this story. The Post, the Washington yeah, Post. With these old complaints about Bitcoin. I mean, we're talking about complaints from three years ago yeah. that were debunked three years ago. I mean, this isn't news. This is... Well, people are still saying marijuana grows breasts on men, and you know, there's all kinds of lies about that, and that's been going on for close to 100 years. At the very least, you should be able to define the words you use as a pejorative term. Sometimes it's hard. This is from Matt O'Brien at the Washington Post. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether Bitcoin is more like a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme. Whatever it is, though, it isn't a currency. It's a tech stock. Each big no. Okay, it's no. not a stock. No, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's not a Ponzi scheme. Okay, um, it it has it bears really no resemblance to any of these things. The thing it closest bears closest uh, bears a resemblance to is a currency or a money transmission system. It's both of those at the same time. It is a money transmission system that has its own units, and those units can be used as a currency. I know. I use them as a currency, maybe not every day, but at least every week. So, uh, yeah, not stock. Stock is a pain in the butt. I've had a little bit of stock in my time, and I prefer to not have any stock. 
personally. It's a pain to deal with. It's a pain well, to acquire. Bitcoin isn't a business. You right. can only own stock in a yeah. company. Bitcoin and, and companies are controlled by people. Bitcoin is not controlled and by And I cannot anybody. transfer stock easily. It's a pain to acquire it in the first place. It's a pain to get rid of the stuff. You know, you got to go through some brokerage. And then there's fees involved in that. And there's time that it takes and paperwork in order to deal with stock. Bitcoin is it's a absolutely digital commodity. Money. You could call it a digital commodity. Yeah, I don't know what that means. It's money to me because I just bought, uh, for instance, I paid a uh, gentleman today with Bitcoin for uh, services. And I've paid for products with Bitcoin as well. It's super easy to use. You just get a smartphone app. Or if you don't have a smartphone, you can do it in other ways, like through blockchain.info. And you can send money to anyone anywhere in the world for next to nothing. But let's go on with the misinformation and probably outright lies here from the Washington Post. So he says, each Bitcoin is really a share in a system that seems to make it cheaper to transfer things online. Money, stocks, bonds, even the deed to your house by cutting out the middleman. Well, kind of. Bitcoin doesn't remove the middleman so much as replace him with middlemen who don't make you pay much, but make society as a whole... Do so instead is this progress. What does that even mean well, the, that society is somehow paying the transfer uh, for the transfer of bitcoins? What kind of crazy statement is that? Um, it's going to get rid of things like uh, MoneyGram and Western Union. It's going to replace those. So and the death of old industry is somehow I, making society. This is the pay best thing something? I can come up with, unless this man has some kind of uh, backing for this ridiculous statement he's made. I mean, this is like saying we can't have light bulbs. Candlestick makers will lose their jobs. He says, "Is this progress? It's supposed to be. Ever since the early days of the internet, people have been trying to figure out how to transfer money online without having to go." through the financial system. The problem, though, is if I send you money, how do you know I haven't already spent it or sent it to somebody else? Because Bitcoin is uncounterfeitable and the <laughs> and the double spin problem was solved with the creation of Bitcoin more than half a decade ago. Did this guy even bother to research his article before he just spouted off at the mouth? Right. This is the most ignorant. These are I mean, it's like he wrote this. Six years ago, and then decided to get the the post decided to publish it. It's it's this is stupid. So he asked this question: How do you know I haven't already spent it or sent to someone else? Because it's you impossible. Don't. You don't, he says. So the only yes, solution I do. I know has... far better that Bitcoin cannot be count counterfeited or double spent than you know with U.S. dollars. He says the only solution, sir, has been to have a trusted third party like a bank. Sit in between us. I send the money to the bank. It verifies that I actually have this money to send. And then it sends it on to you, all for a 2% fee, of course. Well, Bitcoin verifies that you have the money. This is a technology. And Banking it, is a technology. It's a technology that is thousands of years old, you, right? People wrote pieces of paper, receipts, and these sorts of things. Bitcoin is simply a new ledger technology that handles the, the work that humans had to do in the past. This is a step forward, and no, you don't need some inefficient um, banking system yeah. full of people who make mistakes in order right. to charge you 2% to mess everything up and hand over forms to the government that get you put in jail. No, you do not need that. One, sending Bitcoin takes an instant. Literally, as long as you and the other recipient have internet connections, you will see the transaction almost as instantaneously as you press the send button. As soon as that send button goes, it broadcasts to the network and the person receives the information that this Bitcoin is incoming. Now, with the Bitcoin system, there are uh, what are called confirmations. So the Bitcoin network is constantly checking itself to make sure that everything is cool. And that everything. way you can't double spend. Right. That way and you can't send money to somebody, to the same amount of money to two people. Some companies will allow you to spend the Bitcoin that you receive after only two com confirmations. Others might wake and make you wait till six confirmations. Either way, you're not looking at more than 10 or 20 minutes before the full amount of Bitcoin that has been sent to you is available. But the indication that the Bitcoin is coming is sent instantane almost instantaneously. Uh, yeah. instantaneously to you for next to zero fees. So this guy's like, oh, well, go to the bank and then they'll verify you got the money and then it'll be a 2% fee. Well, by the way, transferring money bank to bank with like a wire transfer or an ACH or something like that 
takes time. Yes. I just got a wire transfer the other day and it's, you know, still pending, right? That I don't have that money yet. I can't spend it. Bitcoin, 20 minutes max generally. Right. You you will know within Two cents. within the time of that that first confirmation that you don't have a double spend on your hands. This is it, nonsense, and I can't believe this paper paper published it. Two cents, pretty much, is what I generally spend on Bitcoin fees. No matter how much I'm sending. Five bucks, five thousand bucks. It's two cents right now. More coming up here in moments. Free talk live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Hey, we're back with Free Talk Live. I'm doing the live Saturday edition of the program. 
If you didn't get a chance to pick up your phone and join us tonight, maybe you wanted to comment on the lemonade stand debacle in Texas or the dog licensing. It was an incredibly popular topic night. Uh, you're still welcome to do that tomorrow night. You can bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. That is the point of the show, and we're here live seven nights a week. So you can join us for our live Sunday show, even if you don't get it on your local talk radio station. What's that? You're not listening on your local talk station? Well, we've got over 150 of them. Maybe you can listen in your local market. Go and check our affiliates list at affiliates.freetalklive.com. And there's a link there at the top of the affiliates page to give you more information about how you can contact your local talk station. Maybe you don't have Free Talk Live on the airwaves in your local market, and you'd like that to happen, well, you can call your local program, uh, program directors of the talk stations in your area and ask them real nicely for Free Talk Live. And they might just add the show. You never know. It doesn't hurt to ask. And so we'll give you the instructions on uh, how best to go about doing that over at affiliates.freetalklive.com. Or you can just go to local.freetalklive.com, and it'll take you right to those instructions. We were just at uh, the Talkers uh, New York uh, event. That's right. Just yesterday. and losing it up. You know, getting to you, you hear all these uh, guys that run radio stations talking about how they want the next generation audience, the younger people. Well, here's a little surprise for you. You're not going to get, you know, people... From 25 to 54 by having hosts who are 65 plus. Mm -hmm. So back to Bitcoin. We are reading a hit piece from the Washington Post. This man, whoever it is that has uh, written the article, he's done some level of research because he has a rudimentary, and I'm having a tough time even calling it that, but there are some things he gets right in his upcoming description here of Bitcoin, but he is sorely misinformed about it and seems to believe that the old banking system is vastly superior, uh, even though Bitcoin beats it on every single aspect. Uh, let's go on, though. He says Bitcoin's breakthrough is to have a decentralized network of miners sit in between us instead, us being the buyer and seller. Now remember, these miners are trying to win new Bitcoins by solving computationally taxing math problems. The clever part, though, is that in the process of doing so, they also create a public ledger of every single Bitcoin transaction, what's called the blockchain. That includes every Bitcoin that's ever been won, every Bitcoin that's ever been used, and every Bitcoin that's ever been transferred. Yes, they create a perfect ledger That's right. that is checked over hundreds of thousands, millions of times, um, whereas what's the bank doing? Well, they'll screw it up sometimes. Yeah, they, well, I mean, everybody screws things up, but we have the world's largest computer. That's right. what Bitcoin is, the world's largest computer working on this. So now he says, we don't need a bank to know I have the money I'm sending you and that I'm only sending it to you. The miners confirm all this. And the best part is that instead of having to pay the bank myself to do this, the system pays the miners in new Bitcoins. And by the way, once the Bitcoins run out because there is a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins, then the miners will make money off the mining fees. So there are still fees generally that you can you can actually send Bitcoin with no fee, but it will take longer because yeah. you won't be prioritized, basically. I've had, a, I've had a transaction not go through as a result. If you haven't sent a fee? Of not putting a fee on. I generally put a put a uh, tip on of somewhere between you know one cent and five cents yeah. in order to uh, to get make sure something goes through quickly and that takes care of everything. Once uh, that's in nothing. I mean that's next to zero. In twenty one forty, when the Bitcoin uh, rewards go away uh, for. You know these transactions. Either Bitcoin will have failed, or it would be successful yeah, at that for point. Sure. And I don't think that it's really an issue as to whether or not you're tagging on a penny's worth of uh, Bitcoin. The question, though, so he's relatively accurate in his statement. The paragraph here, Mark, about the mining, right? Yeah. When you say so. That, yeah. Okay. So here we go. It gets bad now. The question, though, is how you get people to mine Bitcoin to begin with. Rewards. Sure. I mean, there are people jumping in all the time. The technology yeah. in mining has uh, outpaced what the average person can do. But right. it could go back to regular computers doing it. People were mining bitcoins with regular computers. Just to at clarify some point. what you're saying, when you say the technology has outpaced, let's put a little perspective here. When Bitcoin started, anybody with a home computer could do some Bitcoin mining. Then they started coming out with custom mining rigs that would outdo the, the home computers. Then major like mega corporations in China started bi building like whole mining super facility things that were dedicated to mining Bitcoin. So 
we have no problem giving people the incentives to mine Bitcoin because they get Bitcoin from mining the Bitcoin. And but what they can would be the incentive the for opening a bank, sir? Yeah. He goes on to say, sure, you can tell them that Bitcoin is digital money they can use to buy things online, but they already have money. You mean money. like at Overstock.com? Yeah. You mean it like going through, uh, you know, places like Purse.io? But they already have money they can use to buy things online. Well, who would, would possibly want more money? And while merchants would be more than happy to save the 2.5% they pay in credit card transaction fees, by the way, American Express, Discover, I've heard they're 4 to 5%, and typically Merchants will be paying 3%. You yeah. have to be a pretty big merchant to get down to 25 or less uh, percent. I'm sure merchants would love it for j just to have to deal with a 2.5% processing fee. Let's not forget that these banks hold the sort of Damocles over their head that when something goes wrong with the sale, chargebacks. Yeah, the, the chargebacks, and then they get their money tied up for months. It, dealing with PayPal is like dealing with Satan. Customers are a lot more blase since they don't pay them directly. Indeed. The answer then was to do what makes anything popular, make it exclusive. Specifically, Bitcoin limits the total number of coins that will ever be created to 21 million. Now, that's not now, the reason they're doing it for exclusivity. No. They're doing it because <laughs> fiat currency, inflationary currencies like the U.S. dollar and pretty much everything everywhere, they have inherent problems. There is a, there's a um, economic philosophy called Austrian economics that focuses on deflationary con con currencies like silver, gold, Bitcoin and these, uh, you know, the, the these are superior in many ways to inflationary currencies. Now, for Bitcoin's first year and a half, as Nathan, by the way, we're up to like what year six now. Uh, as Nathaniel Popper documents in his page-turning history, digital gold, there were only still a handful of people, if that, mining it. But that began to change when libertarians who were convinced, just convinced, that the Federal Reserve's money printing would mean the doom of the dollar discovered Bitcoin and its non-inflatable money supply. A boom was born. But what made people mine Bitcoins is what is kept from spending Bitcoins. Think about it like this. Bitcoin's finite supply means that its price should go up and keep going up. So if you have dollars that are losing little value to inflation every year and Bitcoins that are gaining it, which one are you going to use to buy things with? Now, that's his best objection Oh, yeah, so far. it's a great objection, um, and this is the objection to a deflationary currency. Is, is the deflationary currencies incentivize hoarding of money? It's Gresham's Law as, as well, right? Where Not if, exactly. Isn't Gresham's Law where you spend the bad money instead of the good? Yes, but as long as they're both government money. Uh, oh, I haven't heard that detail about Gresham's Law. That's my Gresham's understanding. Uh, yes, you have, because I've told you before. Okay, well, uh, I didn't retain that detail about Gresham's Law. Yeah, so, I mean, what it does is is that um, in this circumstance, yeah, what he's claiming is is that deflationary currencies incentivize saving. And they'll call it hoarding, if that's what you want to do. And it drives up the cost of money. So if, for instance, I'm holding on, I, I have, uh, you know, some Bitcoins. I've got a 100 Bitcoins. And you, Ian, you, you need a loan. Well, today, under inflationary currencies, you can probably get a loan for something like 6 or 7% or whatever. But I have this 100 Bitcoins, and we're in a Bitcoin world, a deflationary world. Well, you say you want a loan, and I'm like, well, um, it's going to be 25% on my money. Because... I don't want to let my money go. I know it's going to be worth more next year mm -hmm. because the money's because we're in a deflationary currency as opposed yeah. to an inflationary currency. Now, what he doesn't isn't figuring here is is that Bitcoin is a currency. It is not the currency. Gold is a currency. Mm -hmm. It is not the currency. Silver is not a currency. It is not the currency. There may be other currencies that come into play. Therefore, all currency does is represent value. The amount of value that you can trade it for. Currently, bitcoins you can trade them for two hundred and thirty-three dollars and sixty-two cents, according to uh, you know a, a chart I'm looking at right here. Some you know this is a marketplace. This is how our economy is built, and it's a good thing. I get his complaint, and it is a sound economic complaint, but we see what inflationary currencies do too. There's a boom bust cycle. Can anybody yeah, say but 2006? Person, but the average person, uh, he's right. I mean, the average person looking at a pile of dollars and the thought that Bitcoin could go up in value is going to spend the dollars. That, that makes sense. So here's the way you get around that. Uh, and Patrick Byrne over at Overstock.com has figured this out because didn't he announce recently that they were going to offer a discount for people paying in Bitcoin? Yep. I believe he did. And uh, in fact, he got the idea from being on Free Talk Live. Uh, but, you gave it to him. But further... 
purse.io can make it so you can get 20 to 30% off, even higher, if you want, on Amazon. And I've been using it, and it's been working very, very well. In fact, we're going to be talking more about Purse, hopefully, in uh, in upcoming weeks here on the program, which I'm excited about. But if you, if a customer knew that they could spend dollars, they could spend, uh, you know, $200 on Amazon on a product in cash and get that product, or they could spend $150 and get the same product, $150 worth of Bitcoin, then what will they choose? Well, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's damn obvious. In fact, I've, sp- I've saved hundreds of dollars already. Uh, on products by using Purse to buy through uh, Amazon. We're out of time. There's more to this ridiculous article. We'll continue tomorrow night. In the meantime, you can join us at freetalklive.com. Have a great weekend. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph two, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph three, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph four, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, June 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.96 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports recent concerns about sites from antiquity being damaged in war have mostly centered around the Islamic State occupations in Syria. But attention quickly turned south yesterday with the news that the World Heritage Site in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a was the target of multiple airstrikes. UNESCO Director General Arana Bakova yesterday said she was profoundly distressed by the news that one of the oldest urban landscapes in the region came under fire from Saudi warplanes, and locals reported at least five civilians who lived in the area around the ancient neighborhood were killed. Sana'a's old city dates back.